She slowly closed her eyes, resting for a moment, her hand falling limp as she fainted. Bai Li Yuhua looked at her with concern, shouting in panic. Ting Shui. Suddenly, the thousand-year-old ginseng flew out from Dao Ting Shui's body, using its power to heal her. Bai Li Yuhua looked on in astonishment at what was happening before him. The beast master, trembling with rage, ordered the remaining giant snake to attack Bai Li Yuhua. The beast master roared in anger. I want you to pay for my treasure. D. Bai Li Yuhua narrowed his eyes, raised his hand, and touched the head of the giant snake. Instantly, the snake was completely frozen and shattered into dust. His gaze became icy cold. The beast master was shocked, his mouth agape, unable to believe what had just happened. Bai Li Yuhua raised his hand again, sending a beam of blue light straight towards the beast master, striking one of his eyes. His eye exploded, blood gushing out as he collapsed to the ground, screaming in pain. The beast master screamed in agony. A. Tan Mong Jiao and Kim Ming Hook were horrified, their faces pale. The blue light shot out again, sending the beast master flying past Tan Mong Jiao and Kim Ming Hook, crashing hard against a tree. Bai Li Yuhua looked at the thousand-year-old ginseng, his voice calm but full of authority. Heal her first, I'll be back. The thousand-year-old ginseng looked at him, its eyes becoming determined. It patted its chest, full of confidence. The thousand-year-old ginseng let out a squeak, confidently saying. I'll take care of everything. Bai Li Yuhua said coldly. Now it's your turn. This debt must be settled sooner or later. His entire body exuded a chilling aura as he slowly approached Tan Mong Jiao. Terrified, Tan Mong Jiao trembled and backed away. No, this can't be. The third prince is no match for him. I can't die here. I can't. She turned to flee, but Bai Li Yuhua suddenly appeared in front of her. Where do you think you're going? He asked coldly. Tan Mong Jiao shrieked in fear, retreating. Ah? Bai Li Yuhua raised his hand, his eyes cold as he looked at her. This time, I won't spare you. Tan Mong Jiao shivered and pleaded. Please, please don't. Kim Ming Hook quickly stepped in front of her. Wait. I was the one who injured Dao Ting Shui, it has nothing to do with her. Kim Ming Hook pleaded. Tan Mong Jiao looked at him in shock, her heart aching. Your Highness, no. You are no match for him, she cried. Gritting his teeth, Kim Ming Hook was resolute. As long as you spare her, you can do whatever you want with me. I won't resist. Bai Li Yuhua narrowed his eyes, coldly replying. You have no right to negotiate with me. Kim Ming Hook knelt down, begging. Please. I'm begging you. Tan Mong Jiao was stunned, covering her mouth in disbelief as tears streamed down her face. The third prince, kneeling to him just to protect me. She sobbed. Bai Li Yuhua looked at him coldly. I don't need your dignity. Kim Ming Hook raised a small knife, his determination clear. Then so be it, blood for blood. He stabbed the knife into his chest, blood splattering from the wound. Tan Mong Jiao screamed in horror. Your Highness, she cried. Not enough, Bai Li Yuhua said coldly. Kim Ming Hook pulled out the knife, blood gushing from the wound, and stabbed it into his knee. Not enough, Bai Li Yuhua repeated coldly, emotionless. Kim Ming Hook stabbed himself again. Not enough, said Bai Li Yuhua. Kim Ming Hook continued to stab himself, over and over. Tan Mong Jiao watched in terror, covering her mouth as she cried uncontrollably. Not enough, Bai Li Yuhua repeated coldly. Kim Ming Hook kept stabbing, repeating the act many times. After a long time, he was covered in blood, breathing heavily as he knelt weakly on the ground. Bai Li Yuhua looked down at him coldly. Do you think it's enough now, he asked. Kim Ming Hook raised the knife to his own throat. Tan Mong Jiao screamed in panic. No. Your Highness, she pleaded desperately, tears streaming down her face, no. Kim Ming Hook, look at me. Kim Ming Hook turned to her, his eyes filled with tenderness. Jiao Jiao, I have no regrets, he reassured her softly. In agony, Tan Mong Jiao ran to Bai Li Yuhua and knelt on the ground, begging. Please, I beg you to spare him. It's all my fault. I was blinded by jealousy. I tried everything to kill Dao Ting Shui, thinking that if I did, you would notice me. Bai Li Yuhua looked at her with cold indifference. Kim Ming Hook gazed at Tan Mong Jiao, his heart breaking with disappointment. Jiao Jiao, stop talking. He sighed sorrowfully. Tan Mong Jiao smiled bitterly. He, he's just a fool who fell for my tricks. But what do you need his life for? He has done enough for me. This time, I will bear the consequences myself, she declared, standing up and looking directly into Bai Li Yuhua's eyes. With determination, she said. Bai Li Yuhua, let me tell you, there has never been a shortage of fools like him around me. As long as I'm alive, Dao Ting Shui will never have peace. Bai Li Yuhua frowned as Tan Mong Jiao held a needle in her hand and charged at him. D. 
If it comes to this, I'm willing. You kill me, and it will be on your hands, she screamed maniacally. Bai Li Yuhua raised his hand, his eyes cold as she closed her eyes tightly, accepting her fate. If it ends like this, you will never forget me. Tan Mong Jiao thought. Kim Ming Hook cried out in anguish. Jiao Jiao. Suddenly, a figure appeared, pulling Tan Mong Jiao away. Bai Li Yuhua's attack hit nothing but air. He looked in shock at the newcomer as his strike landed on a tree behind Kim Ming Hook. Tan Mong Jiao was thrown into Kim Ming Hook's arms as a cold voice echoed. Enough. Dao Ting Shui said coldly, her voice full of disgust. Dao Ting Shui looked at them, frowning with contempt. Stop putting on this tragic show of willing to die to save each other. A pair of scoundrels is still a pair of scoundrels, no matter how you dress it up. Jing Seng Root tried to pull Dao Ting Shui back but failed. Dao Ting Shui continued to stare at the two of them coldly. Dao Ting Shui declared firmly. I don't care if it was you who caused this or not. Whether you use fair means or foul, if you want to die, let me be the one to do it. So, get lost quickly. Kim Ming Hook and Tan Mong Jiao were shocked, unable to believe what they had just heard. Jing Seng Root sighed in resignation. All right then. With that, it entered Dao Ting Shui's body. Bai Li Yuhua closed her eyes tightly, retracting her power. Kim Ming Hook hurriedly helped Tan Mong Jiao to leave. Suddenly, Dao Ting Shui froze, her face filled with panic. Dao Ting Shui, in distress, blamed herself. Oh my goodness. My master is still here. How could I let them go so easily? What should I do now? Master just saved me. She turned back to cautiously look at Bai Li Yuhua. Dao Ting Shui, confused and awkward, called out. Master? Bai Li Yuhua smiled gently, her soft gaze making Dao Ting Shui's small face blush. Embarrassed, she rubbed her head. Dao Ting Shui, shyly, asked. Why, why are you smiling? Bai Li Yuhua tenderly patted her head, smiling gently. Bai Li Yuhua softly said. You silly, kind girl. Also, call me senior brother. Dao Ting Shui blushed even more, softly calling out. Dao Ting Shui, bashfully, said. Senior brother. Suddenly, a raindrop fell on her face. Dao Ting Shui was surprised and looked up at the surroundings. Dao Ting Shui, puzzled, said. Hmm, it's raining. Why has it been raining so much lately? She turned to Bai Li Yuhua and curiously asked. Dao Ting Shui, concerned, inquired. Senior brother, how many spirit bones have you hunted? Dao Ting Shui was shocked to see Bai Li Yuhua faint and fall to the ground. She anxiously ran over to him. Dao Ting Shui, panicked, called out. Senior brother. Moments later, a fire burned brightly in a cave. Dao Ting Shui kindled a fire at the cave entrance, carefully laying Bai Li Yuhua on some dry grass. His whole body was soaked, and his breathing was rapid. Dao Ting Shui, heart aching, murmured. Yuhua senior brother? Why are you like this? She turned to look at the fire, worried. Dao Ting Shui anxiously thought. I've had the fire going for a while, but he's still not getting better. What should I do? She was startled to see Bai Li Yuhua's clothes suddenly freeze over. Dao Ting Shui, surprised, exclaimed. Hmm, why are his clothes freezing? This can't be, I need to take them off quickly. She placed her hand on his collar and began to undress him. When her hand reached his belt, she hesitated, her face flushing red. Dao Ting Shui, flustered, muttered. This part, maybe, maybe I should stop. Bai Li Yuhua's body was drenched in sweat. Dao Ting Shui made up her mind, deciding she had to remove the wet clothes. Suddenly, Bai Li Yuhua collapsed forward, pinning Dao Ting Shui beneath him. The light from the fire reflected in his eyes, like light shining into a dark path. His whole body floated weightlessly, his hand reaching toward the light. Suddenly, he hugged Dao Ting Shui tightly. She was stunned, shocked, her whole body going rigid. Bai Li Yuhua murmured contentedly. So warm? Dao Ting Shui, startled, quickly pushed him away. Dao Ting Shui, flustered, said. Senior, senior brother. Let go. As he was pushed away, it felt as though Bai Li Yuhua was being pulled away from the warmth. He reached out, grabbing Dao Ting Shui's clothes tightly. She was suddenly yanked, and they both fell to the ground. Bai Li Yuhua landed on top of her, murmuring. Bai Li Yuhua, unwilling to let go, muttered. No, don't go. Dao Ting Shui stared at him blankly. Dao Ting Shui, worried, asked. Senior brother, are you awake? Bai Li Yuhua raised his hand, reaching towards the light he was seeing. Dao Ting Shui's face turned beet red. Dao Ting Shui, embarrassed, whispered. Senior brother. Bai Li Yuhua fell on top of her, continuously muttering. Bai Li Yuhua, refusing to let go, said. Don't, go. Dao Ting Shui was bewildered, looking at him. Dao Ting Shui, worried, thought to herself, what's happening to him? Could it be that his cold symptoms flare up whenever it rains? 
But he's been fine these past few months. Why did it suddenly get worse, and even more severe than last time? Dao Tingxue hurriedly pushed him away once more. Dao Tingxue firmly said. Senior brother, listen to me first. Bai Li Yuehua, in a daze, furrowed his brow. Don't, move. He tightly grabbed Dao Tingxue's wrist, pinning it above her head and holding it there. With his other hand, he slowly undid her belt and tossed it aside. Her outer garment was removed by him. Bai Li Yuehua pressed closer to Dao Tingxue, then lay down, holding her tightly. Bai Li Yuehua breathed lightly, seeming more at ease. This is better. The two of them lay there on the pile of dry grass, holding each other. Dao Tingxue lay stiffly, staring up at the ceiling, feeling helpless as she thought to herself. Dao Tingxue thought helplessly. Hmm? Fine, let's just stay like this for now. I'll ask about everything else when senior brother wakes up. Outside, a loud clap of thunder resounded through the night sky. Heavy rain poured down in the dark night. Elsewhere in the forest, in the midst of the night rain, a gigantic snake's tail appeared. The beast master coldly, darkly muttered. My treasure. He stuck out his long tongue, his eyes filled with malice. Beside him was a massive python, its right eye glowing the same green light as the beast master's. His long nails dug into the tree trunk. The beast master, speaking to the python with hatred, said. It's time for revenge. A man and a snake, like two predators in the dark forest at midnight. In some cave, Dao Tingxue let out a sigh, her brow furrowing. Finally, she calmed herself, gently looking at the unconscious Bai Li Yuehua lying beside her. Dao Tingxue looked at him gently. A person who's usually so cold. Who knew he'd be so adorable when he sleeps. She lightly poked his cheek. Bai Li Yuehua frowned slightly, causing Dao Tingxue to withdraw her hand and smile at him. Suddenly, a strange noise came from outside the cave. The fire, which had been burning steadily, suddenly flared up. Dao Tingxue became alert and turned to look outside. Feeling tense, she thought to herself. Humph, someone's here. With a wave of her hand, she extinguished the fire next to her, plunging the cave into darkness. Dao Tingxue squinted her eyes. Outside, a chilling laugh echoed. The beast master appeared at the entrance of the cave, grinning maliciously at her as if she were his prey. The beast master sneered triumphantly. Found you. Dao Tingxue was shocked, covering her mouth in disbelief. She thought fearfully. How is he still alive, and why has he transformed into such a monster, half-human and half-serpent, with a massive snake head on his back? She glanced anxiously at Bai Li Yuehua, who was still unconscious behind her. Determined, Dao Tingxue thought. Senior brother Yuehua is still unconscious, and the situation with this opponent is unclear. If I'm not careful, he'll be in grave danger. At this point, I have no choice but to risk it. The beast master slithered into the cave, his voice dripping with malice. Don't hide. I see you. Come out now, he taunted. Dao Tingxue clung to a high rock ledge, watching the beast master from above. Seizing the moment when he wasn't paying attention, she drew her knife and lunged at him from behind. The snake head on his back turned and deflected her attack. The beast master grinned, baring his teeth as he turned to face her. So this is where you were hiding, he mocked. Dao Tingxue was stunned, her face paling as he shoved her out of the cave, causing her to crash hard onto the ground. She coughed up blood and struggled to sit up. Damn it. How is he so strong? She groaned in pain, gritting her teeth. A drop of her blood hit the ground. In her current state, she knew she couldn't fight him. Dao Tingxue quickly stood up and dashed deeper into the forest. Praying silently, she thought. I can only hope senior brother wakes up soon. Her steps quickened, the beast master pursuing her with an eager expression. He laughed loudly. My prey is almost within my grasp, where do you think you're going? He rushed towards her, pinning her to the ground. Dao Tingxue cried out in pain. Ah? The beast master tightened his grip on her neck, lifting her off the ground. I've caught you now. He said with a sinister tone, his long tongue flicking out to lick her face. I wonder how your flesh will taste? My little one and I can hardly wait. He sneered, his voice dripping with malice. Dao Tingxue furrowed her brow, cursing under her breath. Damned bastard, let me go, she yelled angrily. The beast master's eyes gleamed with wicked intent. Don't rush. After I eat you and my power grows, I'll hunt down your friend too. Ha ha ha, I can't wait, he laughed maniacally. Suddenly, his body stiffened. Seizing the moment, Dao Tingxue kicked him hard in one eye. Taking advantage of his temporary incapacitation, she quickly jumped to the ground. The beast master roared in fury. Curse you. I'll kill you for this, he vowed, his voice filled with rage. A nearby rock shattered under the force of his massive tail, revealing a red glow with the words. Forbidden Zone. Dao Tingxue ran deeper into the Forbidden Zone, panting heavily, and hid behind a large rock. 
Did I lose him? I don't even know where this place is. Will senior brother Yuehua be able to find me, she wondered, anxiety etched on her face. She frowned, standing up to survey her surroundings. Looks like I'll have to stay up all night. She resolved, moving cautiously through the area. Suddenly, something swiftly passed over her head. Dao Tingxue's expression turned serious as she looked up. Has he caught up already, she thought, suspicious. Unexpectedly, a smooth, rosy rear end came into view. Huh? she muttered, puzzled. Curious, she reached up and poked it with her finger. The monkey, now furious, turned around aggressively. Dao Tingxue was startled, shocked. Shui snowy monkey spirit? The ferocious beast that only appears in the Shui Ice Mountains, why is it here? The monkey roared in anger, swinging its fists to attack her. Dao Tingxue quickly stepped back, leaping up to avoid its strike. Dao Tingxue thought to herself, tense. So fast. The monkey, having missed its attack, grew furious, raised its head, and let out a loud roar before charging at her. Dao Tingxue frowned deeply. Chasing me to the end? There's no other choice. She then conjured a sharp sword and with a swift strike, dealt with the monkey. The monkey's eyes contracted, and it collapsed to the ground. Dao Tingxue panted, looking at the monkey that had stopped breathing. It's over. Suddenly, angry chattering noises echoed around her. Dao Tingxue clenched her teeth, angrily scanning the surroundings. This is bad, it still has companions. The group of monkeys, furious, surrounded her. Dao Tingxue furrowed her brows, gritting her teeth as she looked at them. No. These snowy monkey spirit are too powerful, there's no way I can hold out until dawn. Not to mention. Suddenly, she remembered something, and an idea flashed in her mind. Dao Tingxue was surprised, thinking to herself, how could I forget that there's still that beast master behind me? A moment later, not far away, the beast master angrily swung his tail, knocking down a nearby tree. He cursed in frustration. Damn it. Where did that woman run off to? And what's with this place that I can't sense any spirit beasts? Not even my scouting is working. Suddenly, he heard some unusual noises not far away. He turned around, smiling wickedly. So, that's where you are. He angrily rushed towards the noise. D. His sharp claws dug into flesh, blood flowing from the wound. A bloodied monkey fell to the ground. The beast master, surprised, looked at the monkey on the ground. Why is it a snowy monkey spirit? A group of monkeys roared in anger, then leaped down to attack him. The beast master's face turned pale, and he quickly turned to flee. This is bad. Dao Tingxue stood on a branch not far away, coldly smiling as she watched the battle below. It's quite lively down there, my beast master friend. The beast master glanced back at Dao Tingxue, who was leisurely standing not far away. He gritted his teeth in anger. It's all because of you. Dao Tingxue smiled brightly, looking at him. That's right. So you better give it your all. I'm heading out first. With that, she turned and fled. The beast master roared in anger. The beast master shouted in fury. You! Leave your life behind. He tried to chase after her, but his body stiffened, unable to move. A large monkey had grabbed hold of his tail, spinning him around several times before hurling him far away. Dao Tingxue stood on a branch, watching the scene before her with a cheerful smile. Suddenly, a hand rested on her shoulder. Bai Li Yuehua smiled gently, softly asking. What are you looking at? Why are you smiling so happily? Dao Tingxue turned around, surprised to see Bai Li Yuehua. Dao Tingxue, excited, hugged him tightly. Senior brother. This is great, you're finally awake. Bai Li Yuehua looked at her tenderly, his voice warm. Bai Li Yuehua. Yes, I'm fine now. Dao Tingxue finally realized what she had done, her face turning bright red as she stammered. Dao Tingxue, embarrassed, quickly pushed him away. Um, just now, did I, did I really throw myself at you? What was I doing? Who am I? Where am I? Why am I here? I, I didn't mean to. Bai Li Yuehua also blushed, clearing his throat twice before asking her. Bai Li Yuehua. By the way, Ting Shui, do you know where we are? Dao Ting Shui answered softly, still blushing. Dao Ting Shui. I don't know. Last night I ran too fast, I just realized this place is different from the previous pine forest. Bai Li Yuehua looked at the dark forest ahead, deep in thought. Bai Li Yuehua. Hmm, this is the forbidden area of the fire flame pine forest. It was created to seal the gate to the hell. A hundred years ago, the snowy monkey spirit king brought a blazing demon bone into this forbidden area. To this day, no one has been able to retrieve it. Can you guess how many stars that demon bone has? He raised a finger, looking at her. Dao Tingxue's eyes lit up. Dao Tingxue, excited. Could it be, five stars? Bai Li Yuehua nodded, replying. Bai Li Yuehua. 
Yes, so as long as. Suddenly, a loud crash interrupted their conversation. Dao Ting Shui and Bai Li Yuehua furrowed their brows, looking over. The beast master, covered in blood, had defeated the monkeys and quickly caught up. He grinned wickedly, his eyes red, baring his teeth as he glared at the two of them. The beast master, fiercely and crazily. I am the number one beast master of the empire. I will make you pay for the humiliation I have suffered. D. He shouted, then attacked the two of them. Dao Ting Shui and Bai Li Yuehua exchanged a glance, then quickly leaped up, dodging the beast master's attack. Dao Ting Shui circled behind him, while the beast master snorted angrily. Bai Li Yuehua jumped down from a branch, then quickly launched a direct attack at him. The beast master raised his hand, his gaze icy. In the small forest, a loud explosion rang out, filling the area with dust and smoke. The massive snake tail lay motionless on the ground. Bai Li Yuehua stood there, silently observing the scene before him. Dao Ting Shui approached the leader snowy monkey, extracting the demon bone from it. She smiled brightly, beaming with joy. Dao Ting Shui exclaimed with joy. This is great. Truly an unexpected gain. She turned around, looked at Bai Li Yuehua, and smiled. Dao Ting Shui said. Senior brother, let's head back quickly. Considering the time, today should be the last day of the trial. Bai Li Yuehua blushed and hesitated to look at her. Bai Li Yuehua replied shyly. Um, the next morning, as the sun gradually rose, Dao Ting Shui stopped, looked around, and wondered. Dao Ting Shui asked herself in surprise. Is this the path from last time? I remember, it seemed like. Suddenly, Bai Li Yuehua grabbed her cloak, pulled her close, and lifted her up. Dao Ting Shui looked at him in surprise. Dao Ting Shui gasped. Ha! Huh? Bai Li Yuehua held her and soared into the air. Bai Li Yuehua said. This way will be faster. Dao Ting Shui's heart pounded uncontrollably, and she quietly murmured a soft, um. At the entrance of the fire flame forest, in the square, everyone had already gathered. Kim Mingyun clutched his injured arm, his face full of worry. Kim Mingyun thought anxiously. Why hasn't she returned yet? Kim Ming Hook returned, his body covered in wounds. He mumbled, unable to believe what was happening. Kim Mingyun muttered in disbelief. She, she couldn't have. Leng Zhang Lian approached him and spoke coldly. Lang Zhang Lian firmly stated. She won't die. Her head will definitely return. At that moment, a startled cry rang out. Everyone turned to look at a beautiful woman who had appeared. The crowd murmured. Who is that? Wow, truly a treasure of the human world. On the high platform of the square, the beautiful woman approached Dean Wu Ji. Kai Yang Saintis stepped onto the high platform and saluted the Dean. Kai Yang Saintis respectfully said. Honored Dean, Kai Yang has come to disturb you again. Dean Wu Ji replied courteously. Saintus, there is no need for such formalities. The families of Jiayi and Dong Fang have been allied for centuries, it's only right that we maintain close ties. Below, the contestants exclaimed in surprise. One said in shock. Oh my gosh. I never imagined she would be one of the three Saintuses of the Dong Yang Academy. Other added. Kai Yang Saintus. Could it be that Dong Yang Academy is the most mysterious academy in the Xianwei Kingdom? They've never publicly recruited students, one must be selected by a professor to enter. Wow, I never thought I'd see her here. Hey, have you heard? Kai Yang Saintis is already a peerless beauty, but it's said that the appearance of the Tong Chi Saintis and the Jiao Kuang Saintis is even more stunning. A loud applause erupted. Lim Wei Yen stood on the high platform, looked at the crowd below, and spoke up. Lim Wei Yen announced. Everyone, please be quiet. The results of this forest trial have been determined. The first place winner is Lang Xian. At that moment, a loud voice interrupted. Bai Li Yuehua shouted. Please wait a moment. Lim Wei Yan was taken aback and looked towards the source of the voice. Bai Li Yuehua and Dao Ting Shui were approaching the high platform. Walk slowly, be careful. Dao Ting Shui sighed in relief, her small face blushing as she carried a small bag to Lim Wei Yan. Teacher, I have more magic bones. Please add them to the total. Kim Ming Yun, seeing Dao Ting Shui return, smiled joyfully. It's her. She's back. Leng Zhang Lian remained indifferent, but a hint of pride showed. I told you. She would be fine. Kim Mingyun excitedly grabbed Leng Zhang Lian's hand and ran towards Dao Ting Shui. Let's go see. Leng Zhang Lian frowned and angrily pulled her hand away. You? Meanwhile, the elders were tallying Dao Ting Shui's magic bones. Three stars, forty-five pieces. Four stars, sixteen pieces. Suddenly, the elder froze. Five stars? A five-star magic bone. One piece. Dean Wuji couldn't contain his excitement and stood up to examine it. Below, everyone gasped in shock. How could this be? That's five stars. 
A five-star magic bone. We've only heard of them, no one has ever obtained one. How did she get it? Dean Wuji furrowed his brows tightly, looking at Dao Tingshui with admiration. This child, truly a once-in-a-century talent. Lin Wei Yen smiled and announced the competition results. The quantity is secondary, the rank takes precedence. Although the initial first place holder had an excellent result with 28 four star magic bones, unfortunately. I, Zheng Zhong, hereby declare, the winner of this forest trial is Dao Ting Shui. Lin Wei Yen smiled and pointed towards Dao Ting Shui. Leng Zhang Lian's steps halted. She withdrew her hand from Kim Ming Yun's grasp and looked at Dao Ting Shui with admiration. Five stars? I never thought it would be the legendary magic bone. The first place truly belongs to her. Lin Wei Yen smiled and presented a box to Dao Ting Shui. This is a special gift prepared by the honored dean. Congratulations. Dao Ting Shui smiled modestly and replied. Teacher, it wasn't just me who obtained it. I was teamed up with the eighth prince, and senior brother also helped a lot. Lin Wei Yen smiled knowingly as he looked at her. I know, your highness has already mentioned it. Rest assured, I will send someone to deliver the gifts from others. Headmaster Wu Ji stepped in front of Dao Ting Shui, followed by Kai Yang Saintis. Dao Ting Shui hurriedly greeted them. Headmaster Master. Headmaster Wu Ji nodded with satisfaction, looking at her with admiration. Hmm, you did very well in this trial. Rest for now. At the hour of the rooster today, you and Yu Hua should come to my villa, I have something to assign to you both. Dao Ting Shui quickly responded. Yes. A moment later, Dao Ting Shui hurriedly ran down from the stage, but suddenly a loud voice rang in her ear. Dao Tuan Yang cheerfully exclaimed, Sister. You finally came back. I was so worried about you. Dao Tuan Yang happily ran over and hugged her tightly. Dao Ting Shui smiled, affectionately poking his nose. Don't you trust me? How could something happen to me? Dao Tuan Yang smiled in response. Hmm, I know. By the way, sister, what happened between you and the eighth prince? Suddenly, a bashful cough interrupted their conversation. Dao Ting Shui smiled at Kim Ming Yun, speaking in a teasing yet serious tone. Eighth Prince, there's no need to mention thanks. People often value material things. If you really want to thank me, bringing gold and silver would be more practical. Kim Ming Yun looked at her blankly for a moment, then suddenly burst into laughter. All right, it's a bit inconvenient in the academy. Tomorrow I will send someone to deliver it to your residence, how does that sound? Dao Ting Shui responded with a satisfied smile. A gentleman's word. On the other side, Bai Li Yuehua stood with arms crossed, frowning and impatiently watching Six Vim clinging to his leg, angrily asking. Are you done clinging yet? Six Vim cried, holding onto his leg tightly, voice full of grievance. Not enough. Even a hundred years wouldn't be enough. Boo hoo. My prince, you have no idea how long I've been looking for you. I searched every mountain. Didn't you clearly say to wait for me to find the cave? Why did you disappear in the blink of an eye? If you're chasing after your wife, you should at least let me know. I'm worried to death. I won't leave you again. Boo hoo. Why is my fate so miserable? Bai Li Yuehua, irritated, slapped Six Vim on the face. He glared at Six Vim in anger. If you keep this up, I'll write a letter to the Queen Mother to exchange you for Lu Huan. Six Vim quickly sat up straight, moving back a little, sniffling with grievance. If you don't want hugs, just say so. What's with exchanging people? What's so good about that person compared to me? She's clearly a woman but not lovable at all. And she keeps poisoning me. Clearly, it was said to be harmonious. Dao Tuan Yang eagerly exclaimed. Yuehua brother. Calling out loudly and looking at Bai Li Yuehua. Sister, look over there. Brother Yuehua and the others are there. Let's go over. He smiled at Dao Ting Shui. Dao Ting Shui, feeling embarrassed with her cheeks flushed, stammered. I, I, I have something to do, I'll go ahead. She awkwardly caught by Li Yuehua's gaze, recalling their intimate moments from yesterday, causing her heart to race. She quickly took the gift box from Dao Tuan Yang, said, I'm going to tell Yuehua to come to Master Wu Ji this afternoon. Then left quickly. Dao Tuan Yang, puzzled, wondered aloud. Is there something I'm not aware of, as he watched Dao Ting Shui run away. Dao Ting Shui returned to her room, slammed the door shut, her face red. Why am I so embarrassed just returning? She banged her head against the gift box, yelling in self-reproach. Ah! What am I thinking? I might as well just hit my head and end it. Outside, Ling Zhang Lian knocked on the door, breathing heavily, and coldly asked. Dao Ting Shui, do you dare to have a duel with me? The headmaster Wu Ji furrowed his brow, stroked his beard, and pondered. So this poison forest is a mysterious forest. Kai Yang nodded solemnly. 
Yes, our academy has always been renowned for alchemy and poison creation, but the poison is unsolvable. None of the disciples who entered the Kinan forest have returned, so Headmaster Dong Fang sent me here. The Headmaster Wu Ji nodded thoughtfully. Hmm, I have a general understanding of the situation. However, I currently have matters that prevent me from traveling, so I can only find another way. He looked at the two who had just arrived and smiled lightly. Of course, it seems Headmaster Dong Fang wishes to meet his disciple. The Headmaster Wu Ji stroked his beard and laughed. Very well, let's decide on that. You should return and tell Headmaster Dong Fang that I will visit once I finish my affairs. At that time, he should not hide my elixirs. Kai Yang smiled, stood up, and bowed. I will certainly pass on your words. It's getting late, and the Headmaster must have instructions for his disciple. I will take my leave now. The Headmaster Wu Ji nodded. All right. Dao Ting Shui turned around, watching Kai Yang leave, and thought. So she is Kai Yang, the saintess of Dong Yang Academy. From the conversation earlier, it seems that the master and headmaster Dong Fang might have some past connection. Kai Yang's sudden visit, could something have happened at Dong Yang Academy? She narrowed her eyes and suddenly raised her hand to block an attack from the headmaster Wu Ji. The headmaster Wu Ji, satisfied, retracted his hand and praised. Not bad, you have reached the peak of the 8th rank martial artist. Furthermore, your observational and reaction abilities have improved. It seems you have made great progress in this pine forest trial. Dao Ting Shui smiled, unable to close her mouth. Thank you, master. The headmaster Wu Ji turned and returned to his seat. This time at Dong Yang Academy, you two need to see the headmaster. Dao Ting Shui quickly called out, confused, pointing at Bai Li Yuehua. Master, you haven't checked on my senior brother yet? The headmaster Wu Ji glanced at Dao Ting Shui, his voice calm. At your senior brother's level, minor progress in a small trial is nothing. You should focus on improving yourself. Dao Ting Shui felt disappointed and bowed her head in embarrassment. Yes, master. She thought to herself. This is indeed discrimination, but my cultivation is indeed not comparable to my senior brother's. Wait a minute. Previously, when Yue Hua was my master, he clearly mentioned being a martial king. If he's a martial king, why has he made no progress in the Pine Forest trial? Astonished, she looked up at Bai Li Yue Hua, his power, is it even above martial king? The headmaster Wu Ji, serious, looked at the two. The investigation at Dong Yang Academy this time is likely to be fraught with dangers. Yue Hua, you must protect your junior sister Ting Shui well. Dao Ting Shui was startled and snapped back to attention. Yes, master. The headmaster Wu Ji instructed. The yellow wing coast I gave you, as light as a cicada's wing, yet with unbeatable strength, is the best defensive treasure. Remember to wear it. Dao Ting Shui quickly responded, understanding. I remember now. So the item in the box is the Yellow Wing Coast? I hadn't had a chance to check it before. The headmaster Wu Ji nodded, looking at the two, and continued. Hmm, I still have other matters. Saintess Kai Yang will inform you about the specific situation at Dong Yang Academy. Depart in two days, and prepare. Dao Ting Shui and Bai Li Yuehua replied in unison. Understood, master. Bai Li Yuehua remained silent and glanced at Dao Ting Shui. Ting Shui, why have you been avoiding me lately? Dao Ting Shui, embarrassed, quickly turned and ran. Senior brother, I have something to attend to. Bai Li Yuehua stood still, looking at her retreating figure. Huh? Why is it like this? Kai Yang, sitting in a large bath, was approached by a man in black who entered the room and opened a snake skin box. Saintess, the body has been properly dealt with. This is what you needed. Kai Yang, impatient, waved her hand. Leave it there. The man in black placed the box made of serpent leather on the table and stepped back. Yes. Kai Yang, frustrated, muttered to herself. Indeed, having a master who is inadequate only leads to more trouble. Even after death, having to clean up the body is so troublesome. Humph, this old man Wu Ji only sent two disciples to challenge me, what should I do to entertain them this time? Bai Li Yuehua, nearby, asked Dao Ting Shui. Why do you keep avoiding me? Dao Ting Shui, sitting at a distance, explained. Not at all, isn't it very peaceful here? Bai Li Yuehua looked around. This doesn't look peaceful. What's going on? Dao Ting Shui thought. I can't say it's because every time I see you, I remember how you held me last time, and you were also unconscious. It's very similar to me touching a certain part of you. Though it was supposed to be a medical treatment, it still feels a bit awkward. Dao Ting Shui pulled the curtain and forced a smile. It's nothing, I just want to see when we are departing. Bai Li Yuehua sighed. Ha ha, all right then. Kai Yang pulled back the curtain and apologized. Sorry to keep you waiting. 
Kai Yang lifted the curtain and said, let's go. The driver acknowledged with a yes. Behind a tree, a shadow watched the three of them as their carriage moved away, then disappeared. The carriage creaked as it moved. Jiao Guang, the holy maiden, said, Master, Kai Yang has departed. This is what she sent. Jiao Guang opened a box and handed it to Nan Kuan Wale. Nan Kuan Wale pulled out a red talisman from the box and said, Just a minor demon curse, and they couldn't even handle this small matter, nearly ruining my plans. They deserve to die. With a crack, Nan Kuan Wale crushed the red talisman into dust. Jiao Guang, the holy maiden, took out a letter and handed it to Nan Kuan Wale. He opened it, read it, and said, Ha, that sly old fox Wu Ji only sent two disciples. He then used magic to burn the letter to ashes. Forget it. Controlling two inexperienced children is easier than dealing with that old man. These disciples might be more useful than their master. He grabbed Jiao Guang and pulled her into his arms. Do you agree? Jiao Guang nodded. Yes. On the road, Bai Li Wehua, with a creak, said to Dao Ting Shui. Why have you been avoiding me lately? Dao Ting Shui was stunned and replied. Yes, this is from three months ago. One late night three months ago, a celestial anomaly occurred, and a white star fell into my Jing and Changlin Institute. Jing and Changlin is our institute's animal conservation forest, but since then, the plants in the forest have been growing wildly, with even some poisonous plants appearing. Moreover, the nearby mountain villagers have contracted an unknown disease where the infected always smile from the beginning until death. The director sent disciples into the forest to investigate, but they haven't returned yet. Bai Li Yuhua frowned and asked, If it's this serious, why hasn't your institute asked Master Wu Ji for help? Kai Yang explained. From what I understand, my master doesn't study poisons and creatures as deeply as Director Dong Fang. Director Dong Fang told me that if he doesn't return in three days, we should seek Master Wu Ji's help. He has studied the celestial realm for many years and should be able to help us. Bai Li Yuhua nodded, understanding. I see. Suddenly, the carriage stopped. The coachman, worried, announced. Saintus, there is someone of unknown origin blocking our way. Leng Zhang Lian coldly stood in front of the carriage. Dao Ting Shui, don't even think about avoiding me. Face me in a duel. Dao Ting Shui held her forehead, exhausted. Why are you still following me? Ever since the end of the trials, she has been demanding a duel for days. It's too much, and I don't agree. I didn't expect her to follow me all the way here. Kai Yang thought to herself, observing Leng Zhang Lian. Leng Zhang Lian, the daughter of the leader of the Immortal Crane sect, has chased me all the way here for a duel. I didn't expect that the daughter of the sect leader would be such a martial arts fool. This is truly a heaven-sent opportunity for me. Dao Ting Shui said to Kai Yang, deciding to get out of the carriage. Sorry, I'll get out and explain the situation to her, asking her to go back. Kai Yang said to Dao Ting Shui. Miss Dao, wait. I've heard that the Jiayi Academy has a genius young woman named Leng Zhang Lian. I haven't seen her demeanor yet. Could she accompany me? Dao Ting Shui hesitated but finally agreed. All right, you can come with me. Dao Ting Shui and Kai Yang got out of the carriage. Dao Ting Shui said to Lang Zhang Lian. At the moment, I have urgent business at the Dong Yang Academy. Can we postpone the duel until I return? Lang Zhang Lian replied uncertainly. I can't be sure how long it will take. Kai Yang suggested. In that case, I think of a solution for both of you. Miss Lan can accompany us to the Dong Yang Academy. After Miss Dao finishes her investigation, you can have the duel then. Leng Zhang Lian agreed. All right. Dao Ting Shui sighed and agreed. If that's the case, I'm sorry for the trouble. Kai Yang added. Miss Dao, there's no need to be polite. Actually, I should be thanking you. Jiao Guang asked Nan Kuan Wale. When will Kai Yang arrive? Jiao Guang replied. According to the schedule, it should be around the hour of the horse tomorrow. Nan Kuan Wale nodded and ordered. Very well. The next steps will be entirely up to you. You have the authority to mobilize all the personnel in the institute. Jiao Guang replied. Understood. At the Dong Yang Academy's gate, Tian Quan welcomed them respectfully. Finally, you've arrived. You've worked hard on the way. Tian Quan has prepared rooms for you. Please come this way. Dao Ting Shui responded, thanking. Thank you. It seems that the Dong Yang Academy already knew that my senior brother and I would arrive. Tian Quan looked at Lang Zhang Lian. Guest, please wait a moment. Is this person also a disciple of Master Wu Ji? Leng Zhang Lian replied. I am not. Kai Yang got out of the carriage and hurriedly apologized. Oh dear, I was in such a hurry to return that I forgot to inform Sister Tian Quan. This is Miss Lan, who is from the same academy as Miss Dao, 
but due to some issues, she will temporarily stay at our academy. Please prepare a separate room for her, otherwise, it might cause gossip. Tian Quan considered and agreed. Very well. It's fine. It's actually good for the two to stay together and clarify matters. I will arrange it immediately. The maid accepted the order. Yes, I will go right away. The maid signaled Dao Tingxue and Bai Li Wehua to follow. Please follow me. Tian Quan looked at Kai Yang and questioned. You arrived a moment late. What happened on the way? Why did you bring someone outside of our plan? Kai Yang smiled calmly. I will explain this to the master myself. You don't need to report to me. You only need to take care of the internal affairs of the academy. The external matters are not your concern. Tian Quan frowned, thinking. One day, I will take control of this academy. In Bai Li Wehua's room. Bai Li brother you walled out. Six Veem. Six Veem emerged from the bushes and asked. Your Highness, do you have any instructions? Bai Li Wehua whispered. The woman Kai Yang seemed strange. Investigate her. Six Veem nodded. No problem, I'll take care of it. In Kai Yang's room. Shi Chiam, hiding in the tree and observing, thought to himself. This woman has been changing her clothes repeatedly since she returned, having changed four or five outfits already. What on earth is she planning? Kai Yang, busy preparing, suddenly saw Nan Kuan will lay open the door and exclaimed with joy. Master, Kai Yang missed you so much. Kai Yang embraced Nan Kuan will lay and said. I'm very happy to see you. Nan Kuan will lay looked at her and asked. I see you took good care of Leng Yao Fang's daughter. I'm pleased. So, will there be a reward? Kai Yang's face flushed with embarrassment as she asked. So, will there be a reward? Nan Kuan will lay smiled. Of course there will be. I've brought you what you like most. Tonight we will. Inside the room, muffled sounds were heard. Kai Yang knelt on the floor, her hands bound, while Nan Kuan will lay held a whip and asked. Is that enough? Kai Yang replied. Not yet. Please, use more force. Nan Kuan will lay smiled, picked up the whip, and said. As you wish. In Dao Ting Shui's room. Dao Ting Shui, half asleep, murmured. Who is it? Go away, don't come here, it's dangerous. Leave quickly, don't enter the Kin A.M. Chang Lim. Dao Ting Shui jolted awake and exclaimed. It was just a dream. Someone knocked at the door. Bai Li Wahua frowned, standing outside, and asked. Ting Shui, are you in there? Dao Ting Shui, surprised, opened the door and said. Senior brother, it's so late. Why are you looking for me? Bai Li Wahua frowned and replied. This academy seems a bit strange. What's wrong with you? You look unwell. Dao Ting Shui smiled and replied. It's nothing, just a bad night's sleep. Why do you think the academy is strange? Did you discover something? Bai Li Wahua poured some water, smelled it, and said. Previously, Saintus Kai Yang came seeking help. The reason seemed plausible but wasn't entirely correct. I remember Kai Yang saying when Dong Fang's master was about to leave, if he didn't return in three days, he should go to the Jia Yi Academy to find Dean Wu Ji. Dean Dong Yang knew that Kin A.M. Chang Lim was poisonous, so why didn't he wait for the master to finish studying before leaving? The water seems fine. Dao Ting Shui took the water, thanked him, and understood the implication. So, you mean Dean Dong Yang had a better way to investigate this matter but chose a risky approach without certainty of success? But is there any other reason why Dean Dong Yang couldn't do it that way? By Li Yuchua. What you said is not without reason, but there's another strange matter the attitude of the Kai Yang saint is towards Leng Zhang Lian. Dao Ting Shui placing her cup down and sighing. That's right, I find it strange too. Even though she's heard of and admired Zhang Lian, her attitude is overly enthusiastic. It seems before we enter in capital, we need to investigate. By Li Yuchua. I've already sent Six Veem to investigate, but the result is. Six Veem blamed himself. He had been sitting on a tree keeping watch all night, but suddenly fell asleep. He's never fallen asleep during a mission before. Dao Ting Shui surprised. Six Veem is at the level of a martial master, how could that happen? Suddenly, the apothecary in Ting Shui's subconscious awakens. Apothecary in Dao Ting Shui's subconscious. Little girl, forgive me for waking up suddenly. I'll explain later, but right now, go check that guard's shoulder. Dao Ting Shui approaching Six Veem, running her hand over his shoulder. Don't move. This is. Ting Shui in her mind hears apothecary. Apothecary. You must be careful. Ah, I fell asleep before I could finish speaking. Dao Ting Shui's consciousness called out to apothecary, 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 but only heard a snoring sound. Dao Ting Shui helpless. I just feel powerless. Could the expert in making potions be the Kai Yang Saintus? Knocking sound knock knock. Heavenly Saintus from outside. 
I bring a message for the two esteemed masters. The two have returned, please come to the main hall. There is something to discuss. By Li Yuchua surprised. Is it Dong Yang's master at the Eastern Institute's front hall? By Li Yuchua and Dao Tingshui bowing. Greetings to Dong Yang's master. Dong Fang Shuli turning and smiling. Dear ones, if you're disciples of Wu Ji, just call me senior uncle. Please, sit. Dong Yang's master smiling. Oh, has Kai Yang already explained the origins of the Eastern Institute to you too? Probably not. Let me tell you about our academy's history. Dong Yang's master ordering. My disciple, bring tea for the siblings by Li Yuchua and Dao Ting Shui. Sip it slowly. Dong Fang Shu Li sternly. What are you mumbling about? Go get some snacks, come here so I can tell them about the history of the academy. By Li Yuchua annoyed. Senior uncle, this isn't urgent, you. Dong Fang Shu Li continuing without stopping. Remember back then, I went through countless hardships, relying on my own strength, starting from nothing to create the Eastern Institute. By Li Yuchua and Dao Ting Shui sitting and listening, as night falls, Dong Fang Shu Li is still talking. After that, the disciples of the Eastern Institute were divided into two factions red-robed ones mainly focus on cultivating medicine, while black-robed ones specialize in making poisons. That's the appearance you see today. By Li Yuchua and Dao Ting Shui thinking to themselves. Finally, it's over. Dao Ting Shui looking at Dong Fang Shu Li. Senior uncle, so now can you tell us what happened in the M Chang Forest? Dong Fang Shu Li his face darkened. M Chang Forest has been contaminated by a kind of poison. By Li Yuchua shocked. What? Dong Yang's master taking out a small bottle from his sleeve. This is the source of the poison I found, discovered in some mutated plants. He hands the bottle to Bai Li Yuchua. Bai Li Yuchua accepting the bottle. Is there an antidote? Dong Fang Shu Li. This is an unknown poison, let alone finding an antidote. But it seems to affect plants. The nearby residents of M Chang Forest might have eaten contaminated plants from the forest. A voice from the bottle speaks to Dao Ting Shui. You must go quickly. Dao Ting Shui thinking. Why does this feel familiar? She asks, why do I feel this way? Dong Fang Shu Li. Regarding those villagers, I will find a way to treat them. But please inform brother Wu Ji and ask him to come here quickly. Dao Ting Shui suddenly reaching out to grab the poison bottle, muttering. What am I doing? By Li Yu Chua worriedly. Ting Shui, what's wrong? Dao Ting Shui at midnight, in her room, wakes up holding her head, in pain. What's happening to me? Bai Li Yuchua suddenly appears, holding a small bottle. You fainted. This is a tonic pill. Dao Ting Shui taking it. Thank you. She eats a pill. Bai Li Yuchua touching Dao Ting Shui's forehead. Why are you sweating so much? Is there any discomfort? Dao Ting Shui blushing. Not much left. Bai Li Yuchua closing his eyes. That's good. He pulls out another small bottle. Right, I got this to help you. It seems you care a lot about it. Dao Ting Shui taking the bottle, hugging it to her chest. Senior brother, no matter how dangerous M Chang Forest is, I must go see the cause. Perhaps it's just an indescribable feeling. Bai Li Yu Chua standing there. All right. Dao Ting Shui surprised. What? Bai Li Yu Chua looking at Ting Shui with gentle eyes. We'll go together. Dao Ting Shui blushing, smiling lightly. Yes, at the entrance to M Chang Forest. Dong Fang Shu Li frowning. Are you really not going to wait for Brother Wu Ji and enter the forest first? Dao Ting Shui smiling. It's all right, senior uncle. We don't know when Master will arrive. We'll just go ahead and scout. You've already sent a disciple to accompany us, nothing will happen. Dong Fang Shu Li stroking his beard. Hmm, all right. Go ahead. Yi Xin has gone with me once, he will take care of you on the way. Dao Ting Shui. All right. Fine. By the way, holy maiden, the person traveling with us is named Lang Zhang Lian, and I would appreciate it if you could take care of her a bit. She usually stays in her room cultivating. Just bring her some food and water. Thai and Chuan clasping hands together. Understood. Miss Dao, rest assured, I will arrange everything. Dao Ting Shui to Bai Li Yu Chua and Yi Xin. Let's head out then. Dong Fang Shu Li and Jiao Guang watching the three of them leave, Jiao Guang bows her head. Principal, Dao Ren, I still have some matters to arrange, please excuse me. Dong Fang Shu Li. Very well, go ahead. As Jiao Guang walks away, an assassin appears on a tree branch. Holy maiden. Jiao Guang glances at him. Make your move after nightfall today. The assassin bows his head. Understood. In Lang Zhang Lian's room, late at night. Lang Zhang Lian sitting in meditation, her hands on her knees, eyes closed. The assassin disguised as a servant, opens the door and brings in the food. 
Miss Lang, it's time for dinner. He places the tray on the table and pulls out a knife hidden beneath it. Lang Zhang Lian opens her eyes, looks at the assassin. Who are you? The assassin smiles sinisterly, raises the knife. Please, enjoy your meal. He lunges the knife towards Lang Zhang Lian. Lang Zhang Lian quickly pinches the knife's blade with two fingers, opening her eyes. You don't need to know. The assassin steps back, turns around, and escapes through the window. I'm out of here. Lang Zhang Lian chases after him urgently. Stop right there. The assassin runs around the academy, stopping by the wall. Lang Zhang Lian looking at him lazily. Still won't tell me your name? The assassin puts his hand to his mouth and blows a blood whistle. Lang Zhang Lian looks up and sees a spiderweb descending from the sky, surprised. The assassin kneels and reports to Jiao Guang. Holy maiden, she's been captured, and the ten fragrance powder was used perfectly. Jiao Guang tilts her head and looks at him. Very good. Lock her up in the prison first. The assassin obeys, understood. In the prison. A guard drags the unconscious Lang Zhang Lian inside. They've been capturing a lot of people lately. All of them are wealthy ladies and gentlemen. Other guard points to a nearby cell. Aren't they? Look at this room, I heard there's a prince in there. That guard dismisses. Nonsense. Why would a prince come to our academy? Let's go. In the adjacent cell Kim Mingyun, injured and unconscious. Daytime in the M. Chong forest. Dao Ting Shui exhausted after defeating a plant monster. This must be the last one, right? Yi Xin sheaths her sword, nodding. Yes. We've cleared this area for now. We should move on before they revive. Dao Ting Shui turns to look at Yi Xin, surprised. Revive? Yi Xin panics. The plant monsters have awakened. They've evolved, let's get out of here quickly. Bai Li Yu Chua raises her hand to protect Dao Ting Shui, looking at the gruesome plants ahead. Someone is accelerating the growth of these plants. You should take her and go. I'll catch up later. Dao Ting Shui agrees, worried. Be careful, senior brother. We'll wait for you up ahead. Bai Li Yu Chua rushes forward, dealing with the plant monsters quickly, noticing a shadowy figure in the distance, channels internal energy and strikes. Come out! Nan Kuan Wu Lei dodges swiftly, lazily looking at Bai Li Yu Chua with a faint smile. This person can break through the formation so easily, it's impossible to gauge their cultivation level. Truly interesting. Dao Ting Shui and Yi Xin after running a distance, stop to rest. Dao Ting Shui suddenly realizing something. Yi Xin, wait a moment. Yi Xin tilts her head. We're almost there. Miss Dao, follow me. Dao Ting Shui frowns, worriedly looking at a crystal ore. What is this crystal ore? Do you know? Yi Xin slowly shakes her head. I don't know. I've never seen it before. Perhaps it's because of the anomaly that it suddenly appeared. Dao Ting Shui frowns, resolutely. You've been away with Principal Dong Yang for days. These things have clearly been here for a long time, how could they have just appeared? Yi Xin angrily. Stop wasting time. Head to the center, the storm is gathering. Dao Ting Shui sensing the tension, her eyes filled with anger. So, you are the problem. Dodging as Yi Xin lunges at her. Yi Xin eyes bloodshot, slashing with her sword. Get to the center with me. Dao Ting Shui furious, dodging the attack, thinking. She must be controlled by someone. No matter what, she's a disciple of the Dong Yang Academy, I can't kill her. Dao Ting Shui reaching out, desperately. Sorry, Yi Xin. She grabs Yi Xin's arm and twists it behind her back. Yi Xin drops her sword, struggling to regain composure, takes something from her chest and throws it at Dao Ting Shui. Dao Ting Shui leaps into the air to avoid it, looking down to see numerous plant monsters sprouting. What the heck is this, as a vine wraps around her ankle, pulling her to the ground. Yi Xin rushes forward, grabs Dao Ting Shui's waist, and leaps into the air, grinning sinisterly. Let's go serve the Lord. Dao Ting Shui panicking. Yi Xin, this is bad. Yi Xin falls to the ground, the atmosphere turning eerie and frightening, as Yi Xin collapses on top of Dao Ting Shui. Dao Ting Shui struggles to sit up, covering her nose. The pollen is toxic, she pushes Yi Xin away. Looking at Yi Xin, shocked to see her eyes white, blood spilling from her mouth. She's dead. Dao Ting Shui stood up, her hand resting on the tree trunk. Who is the person the master just mentioned? The manipulator? She no longer cared much, feeling the poison in the air growing heavier. Dao Ting Shui felt her entire body go numb and worried. Although I don't know why this poison isn't a fatal blow to me, I can't stay here for long. I need to find senior brother quickly. A loud noise startled Dao Ting Shui, as she noticed something moving rapidly toward her. At the capital of M. Chang forward. Bai Li Yuhua glared at Nanku and Wu Lei, furious. What did you just say? Nanku and Wu Lei flicked his hair lightly and smirked evilly. 
Your junior sister has now become a meal for the divine beast, haha. <laughs> Bai Li Yuhua frowned, enraged. Divine beast? Shut up. He threw a palm strike, causing Nanku and Wu Lei to be pushed back and slam into a tree trunk. Nanku and Wu Lei gritted his teeth, clutching his chest, but smiled wickedly. Go ahead. Up ahead is the illusion realm formation that I painstakingly set up. Haha, <laughs> the illusion mist in the capital of M Chang forward. Bai Li Yuhua ran through the rain and found Dao Ting Shui lying unconscious beside a terrifying monster. Dao Ting Shui. Dao Ting Shui woke up, blood trickling from her mouth. Senior brother, you finally came. I've discovered the source of the poison, cough, cough. It must be this poison beast. Bai Li Yuhua held Dao Ting Shui, worried. Don't speak anymore. The poison from this beast can't be cured. I truly. Dao Ting Shui coughed up blood, exhausted. Senior brother, I'm sorry. I'm so useless. I didn't finish everything in time, I haven't even married you yet, or had a happy family with you. I'm sorry. Bai Li Yuhua hugged Dao Ting Shui tightly, burying his face in her head as tears fell. You'll be okay. Senior brother will take you back. Dao Ting Shui closed her eyes, letting her hand fall to the ground in the pouring rain. Nanku and Wu Lei appeared in front of Bai Li Yuhua, smiling coldly. Looking at this tragic scene, you must be feeling terrible, right? Your disappointed and lost demeanor is truly pitiful. Bai Li Yuhua gently laid Dao Ting Shui down on the ground, his eyes filled with anger and determination. What have you done to her? Nanku and Wu Lei continued to smirk evilly. Don't worry, I just wanted to help you. With your cultivation higher than ordinary people, you'll become my puppet and help me control the human world. Bai Li Yuhua angrily ignored Nanku and Wu Lei's attempts to manipulate him. You won't succeed. The human heart isn't as easily manipulated as you think. Nanku and Wu Lei her expression changed, angry. What's going on? Why can't I control you? Bai Li Yuhua placed Ting Shui on the ground, her voice cold. Nanku and Wu Lei, people's hearts aren't as easy to manipulate as you think. She stood up, his eyes full of confidence. Do you think you can trap me in this situation? Ting Shui is absolutely not an ordinary woman. She harbors great ambitions and would never easily say she's useless. Nanku and Wu Lei sneered, but a hint of worry rose in his heart. I didn't originally want to act against you, but you've provoked me repeatedly, even dared to probe into my memories. This time, I definitely won't spare you. Nanku and Wu Lei was pushed back by Bai Li Yuhua's power, his body slamming hard against a tree. He wiped the blood from his mouth, a flash of surprise in his eyes. How could this be, he broke through my setup. Given the current situation, I certainly can't hold out. It's best to retreat for now. Nanku and Wu Lei turned away, but a plan was already forming in his mind. Though I don't know why he knows me, I will definitely control him. Nanku and Wu Lei's face showed determination, a sarcastic smile on his lips. Such great power must serve me. Ting Shui woke up, looking around, her eyes full of vigilance. Where is this? She started to walk but suddenly stopped when she heard a voice echoing around. Don't come here, run away. Ting Shui frowned, finding the voice incredibly familiar. What is it, really? Ting Shui saw two red lights on the branch ahead. Could it be a monster? She closed her eyes, calling for Apothecary in her mind. Apothecary appeared, looking around in surprise. Little girl, where are you? Why is there poison all around? Dao Ting Shui collapsed to her knees, her voice weak. I'll explain to you later. My whole body is paralyzed right now. Apothecary, is there any way to help me detoxify this? Apothecary blinked. The poison from spores can be neutralized. Ting Shui clutched her chest, with little spirit jingseng on her shoulder, and apothecary beside her detoxifying her. But the poison miasma in the forest. Your senior brother hasn't caught up yet, I'm afraid he'll get hurt. Apothecary stroked his beard, his eyes pensive. The spore poison on your body can be neutralized, but this miasma doesn't belong to the human world, I can't help you with it for now. After being healed, Ting Shui stood up, her eyes wide with surprise. Not from the human world? Apothecary frowned, that's right. I advise you not to go further, your body can't withstand it now. Ting Shui's face darkened, she ignored Apothecary's warning and ran quickly forward, her face showing determination. If it's from the celestial world, then I must investigate it thoroughly. Ting Shui ran through the rain, her eyes resolute, her teeth clenched. This must be the center of the M Chang forest. The source of the poison must be here. Apothecary followed behind, and Ting Shui suddenly stopped when she saw a giant monster lying in front of her. It seems like this is the monster, but why does this place feel familiar? Ting Shui reached out to touch its face, but the purple crystals around it suddenly emitted a beam of light. Apothecary shouted in warning. Little girl, be careful. 
The monster opened its eyes, bared its fangs, and roared ferociously. Tink Shue backed away, sensing the overwhelming killing intent emanating from it. This is completely different from before. How can it still attack so fiercely while being severely injured? Could it be that it's also being controlled? The more Tink Shue ran, the more the monster pursued her. This creature is full of poison, I can't fight it head on. She quickly dodged the monster's attacks. Suddenly, the monster stopped. Why isn't it moving anymore? The monster groaned, Tink Shue, run away. Tink Shue suddenly realized this voice, could it be Xiao Qiu? She tried to think of a way to help Xiao Qiu escape from control. The crystal minerals continued to channel energy into the monster. Tink Shue smirked. So that's it. The problem lies with those crystal minerals. In places where the crystal minerals are concentrated, it becomes much more frenzied. Earlier, in areas with fewer minerals, it could control itself and not harm me. It seems the person controlling it is using a crystal mineral formation to manipulate it. The monster became even more frenzied, its eyes glowing red, its teeth clenched, roaring ferociously. Bai Li Yuhua appeared, escaping from the monster's body, intending to use internal energy to deal with it. But Ting Shui hurriedly stopped him. Senior brother, don't hurt it. Bai Li Yuhua withdrew his energy, looking at the monster with conflicted eyes. Ting Shui looked closely and realized that the monster was gradually shrinking. So it's the Nine Underworld Poison Emperor Spirit Beast. She jumped up and caught Xiao Qiu. Xiao Qiu, is it really you? Xiao Qiu, exhausted, bleeding from the mouth, panted heavily. Luckily, I didn't harm you. Ting Shui, with tearful eyes, turned to Apothecary for help. Apothecary, please save it, it's seriously injured. Apothecary stroked his beard, examining Xiao Qiu closely. Little girl, this little mouse is seriously injured, ordinary treatment won't cure it. Ting Shui panicked. What? She burst into tears. Who inflicted such serious injuries on you and then manipulated you? I must kill them. Bai Li Yuhua frowned, sadly looking at Ting Shui. Don't be hasty. Ting Shui, with tear-filled eyes, looked up at Bai Li Yuhua. Senior brother, it's the spirit beast that grew up with me. I must save it. Bai Li Yuhua lowered his head, feeling Ting Shui's determination, but didn't know what to do. Apothecary spoke. It's not impossible to save it, but you'll need to find the Jade Dragon Golden Elixir and refine it into an 8th level pill. Only then can it be saved. But that ingredient is from the celestial world, obtaining it will be extremely difficult. Ting Shui, resolute and determined. A celestial item? No matter how difficult it is to obtain, I must retrieve it to save Xiao Qiu. Old medicine man gave Xiao Qiu a pill. For now, we can only use a level 6 life blood pill to keep her alive. Once we're out of here, I will think of another way. Xiao Qiu weakly murmured. Ting Shui, be careful. Nan Ku and Wu Lei. Before she could finish, Xiao Qiu fainted. Ting Shui, worried, asked. Nan Ku and Wu Lei? She turned to Bai Li Yuhua. Senior brother, I found out that Xiao Qiu was being controlled by someone. She mentioned serving up master. I suspect that this master is the Nan Ku and Wu Lei that Xiao Qiu was referring to. Bai Li Yuhua frowned. Yes, I believe you're right. Ting Shui furrowed her brow slightly. There are two types of poisons in this poisonous forest one is the plant spore poison, and the other is the miasma that Xiao Qiu released. Now that Xiao Qiu has been saved, we can use old medicine man's elixir to clear the remaining poison from the forest. The urgent matter now is to return to the academy quickly. Bai Li Yuhua agreed. Indeed, there might still be disciples under control at the academy. Leng Zhang Lian and Six Vim might also be in danger. Let's go. The two hurried back to the academy. As they approached, Six Veem suddenly appeared before them, head bowed and knees buckled, one hand pressed to the ground. Your Highness, you can't return to the academy. Ting Shui and Bai Li Yuhua rushed forward. Ting Shui, concerned, exclaimed. Six Veem has been poisoned. She helped Six Veem sit down and called for Xiao Lingxian to detoxify him. Bai Li Yuhua asked seriously. What on earth happened? Six Veem lifted his head, his voice tired. Your Highness, you once ordered me to keep an eye on the Saintess of Kai Yang. It turns out she is indeed problematic. After they entered the poisonous forest, I continued to watch them. Kai Yang and Thian Guan were arguing, and Thian Guan's words criticized Kai Yang for acting on her own, disrupting the master's plans to control the mortal realm. Lady Lang was also imprisoned by them. When I tried to get closer to eavesdrop, I encountered Lu Lung. Six Veem, surprised, asked. Why are you here? Did Madam send you? Why didn't you inform me and the young master? Lu Lung looked at Six Veem with cold eyes and suddenly attacked him. After being poisoned, I quickly ran to find you too. 
I don't know why Lu Lung suddenly turned on me, but her state was entirely different from before. Ting Shui wondered. Who is Lu Lung? The last time Six Veem was poisoned with the dream drifting powder, could that have been her doing as well? She looked up at Bai Li Yuhua. Senior brother, but from Six Veem's words, it seems that you know this girl? Bai Li Yuhua sighed and replied. She is one of the guards of the princess. As far as I know, she couldn't possibly betray the princess. But why did she suddenly attack me? Ting Shui stood up, her eyes full of suspicion. Senior brother, could it be that Lu Lung is also under someone's control? Bai Li Yuhua nodded in agreement. Lu Lung's situation is unclear, and Lang Zhang Lian's life or death is unknown. We must return quickly. Six Veem, bewildered, asked. Who is controlling Lu Lung? He quickly stood up and chased after Ting Shui and Bai Li Yuhua. Your Highness, Miss Dao, wait for me. Kim Mingyun woke up in a cell, holding his head in confusion. What's going on? Where am I? He looked around and saw Lang Zhang Lian taking keys from an unconscious guard on the ground. Miss Lang? Lang Zhang Lian, holding the keys, turned back and signaled for Kim Mingyun to stay quiet. After unlocking the cell door for him, she quietly explained. I followed Dao Ting Shui to the Eastern Academy, but I was ambushed by someone. This academy is quite strange. Kim Mingyun clutched his chest, wincing slightly. Haha, strange doesn't even begin to cover it. He then asked. And you? Why are you here? Lang Zhang Lian quickly recounted F. After the Pine Forest trial, I was suspicious of Kim Min whose sudden increase in cultivation. I discovered that someone was using a treasure to assist him, and the clues pointed to one of the three saintesses, Zhao Guang. If I'm not mistaken, there must be someone behind Zhao Guang pulling the strings. Kim Mingyun replied seriously. We need to leave here quickly. You must have noticed that many disciples here are behaving strangely, like puppets. I suspect they have been controlled by someone else. As for how, I'm still unsure. The two hurried along, but suddenly stopped when they encountered a guard. Kim Mingyun frowned. This isn't good. The guard shouted. Someone's escaping. Leng Zhang Lian quickly launched an attack, knocking the guard unconscious. Kim Mingyun, deep in thought, said. This matter concerns the survival of the academy. Our only option now is to find the headmaster, Dong Fang, to understand the situation. Leng Zhang Lian nodded. Yes, let's go. In the study, Dong Fang Shuling was reading a book. Kim Mingyun and Leng Zhang Lian quickly entered. The two bowed. Headmaster. Kim Mingyun spoke seriously. Headmaster, I, Kim Mingyun, have something to report. Dong Fang Shuling looked at the two, slightly surprised. Eighth Prince, Miss Lang, why are you in such a hurry? Has something happened? Kim Mingyun looked directly at Dong Fang Shuling and explained. I apologize for the suddenness, but we have discovered that Saintist Zhao Guang has colluded with outsiders, using special methods to control the disciples within the academy. Both Miss Lang and I were ambushed by her subordinates and imprisoned. Dong Fang Shuling frowned, his expression serious. Do you have any evidence for these claims, Eighth Prince? This matter concerns the Saintess and the Academy's disciples, I urge you to be careful with your words. Kim Mingyun placed his hand on his chest and bowed. Please apprehend Saintess Zhao Guang first. After that, we will present the evidence ourselves. Dong Fang Shuling turned away, one hand clasped behind his back, his voice calm but cold, very well. If that's the case, guards. A group of men suddenly appeared, swords drawn, surrounding Kim Mingyun and Leng Zhang Lian. Dong Fang Shuling ordered. Arrest these two. Kim Mingyun, shocked, asked. Headmaster Dong Fang. What do you mean by this? Dong Fang Shuling laughed loudly, his eyes cold. I can't let you ruin the plans of that great lord. Kim Mingyun and Leng Zhang Lian were surrounded by a group of subordinates. Leng Zhang Lian questioned. That great lord? Kim Mingyun's face darkened. I never expected even the director to be controlled. Dong Fang Shu Li ordered. Capture them. His subordinates responded in unison. Yes, sir. Leng Zhang Lian drew her sword and engaged in battle. While fighting, Kim Mingyun warned. Miss Leng, they are being manipulated. We must not harm them. Suddenly, Dong Fang Thursday Li's eyes flashed as he struck a palm toward Kim Mingyun, angrily saying. Ignorant fool, how dare you resist? A powerful beam of light struck toward Dong Fang Thursday Li. Kim Mingyun and Leng Zhang Lian looked in surprise toward the door, where they saw Bai Li Yuhua and his sister appear. After Bai Li Yuhua's strike, Dong Fang Shu Li was injured, pinned against the wall, and passed out. He noticed the red threads around the room and immediately thought. Puppet art, this is indeed the technique of the demon clans Nanku and Wu Lei. Bai Li Yuhua quickly ran out of the room, shouting back. Ting Shui, wait for me here. I'll be back. 
Ting Shui called out worriedly. Seen your brother. But she was immediately attacked by Dong Fang Thursday Li's subordinates. Dao Ting Shui swiftly took them down and quickly followed by Li Yuhua. Nan Kuan Wu Lei was sitting with his subordinates, while Kai Yang stood beside him, dressing his wound. With a voice full of emotion, Kai Yang said. Master, your injury pains me greatly. Just say the word, and I will surely capture the one who hurt you. Nan Kuan Wu Lei sneered sinisterly. Soon, someone will take action for me. A streak of blue light shot toward Nan Kuan Wu Lei. Thian Guan yelled out warily. Who dares? Bai Li Yuhua appeared. Nan Kuan Wu Lei, enraged, shouted. You! Another strike, and you destroy my most important star gem. Bai Li Yuhua responded coldly. Nan Kuan Wu Lei, it's time we settle this. Nan Kuan Wu Lei furiously commanded. Kill him for me. Immediately, Kai Yang, Thian Guan, and Zhao Kuang rushed to attack Bai Li Yuhua. Bai Li Yuhua forcefully knocked Nan Kuan Wu Lei's subordinates aside, shouting. Get out of the way. He then struck Nan Kuan Wu Lei, sending him flying into a tree and coughing up blood. He approached, speaking sternly. You have allied with the demon clan, brought harm to your people, and now you are endangering the mortal world. I will not tolerate this. Kai Yang, injured, shouted from the ground. Stop! If you dare lay a finger on the master, I will kill you. Thian Guan, also injured, leaned against a tree, thinking to herself. It seems Nan Kuan Wu Lei is no match for this man. I cannot die here. The urgent matter now is to find a way to escape. Bai Li Yuchua stood in front of Nan Kuan Wu Lei and coldly asked. What exactly are you planning all this for? Nan Kuan Wu Lei stood up, clutching his chest, and sneered. For what? By controlling these people, I can get what I want. But now, everything has been ruined by you. With that, he gathered his energy and struck a palm toward Bai Li Yuchua, shouting madly. If I can't control you, then I'll destroy you. Boom. A flash of light shot forward, knocking Nanku and Wu Lei away. Dao Ting Shui appeared, grabbed his neck, and coldly asked. Who are you trying to destroy? With blood in his mouth, Nanku and Wu Lei laughed loudly. Ha ha, you're not dead? It seems that the Qu Poison Emperor wasn't that powerful after all. Dao Ting Shui, enraged, shouted. So it was you who injured Xiao Qiu? Nanku and Wu Lei, now weak, responded. If you kill me, you'll never know why he fell to the mortal world. Dao Ting Shui's eyes sharpened as she glared at him. The heavenly emperor's poison maiden can't threaten me. I want you dead. With that, Dao Ting Shui channeled her energy and snapped Nanku and Wu Lei's neck. He fell unconscious to the ground. Bai Li Yuchua looked at her and gently asked. Feel better now? Dao Ting Shui replied. Senior brother, are you hiding something from me? I overheard your conversation with Nanku and Wu Lei. You knew him long ago, didn't you? Bai Li Yuchua sighed as he looked at her. He's my younger brother. Dao Ting Shui was shocked. Your brother? Nan Kuan Wu Lei is from the heavens? If that's the case, then you too. Bai Li Yuchua nodded. Yes, we grew up together. Later, for some unknown reason, he suddenly sought refuge with the demon tribe. Part of the reason I came to the mortal world was because of this. Dao Ting Shui pondered, surprised at her own thoughts. I always knew senior brother's cultivation was extraordinary, but I never imagined he was also from the heavens. No, now is not the time to think about this. She continued. The demon tribe likely still has significant movements. I'll send someone to investigate further. But, if I return to the heavens, would you come back with me? Her cheeks flushed as she shyly thought. Why does it sound like I'm proposing? She quickly said. I, ah, uh, I'm not talking to you anymore. Uncle Master probably needs help. I'll head back first. With that, Dao Ting Shui hurriedly ran off. Two days later, in the main hall of the Eastern Academy, Bai Li Yuchua looked at Dong Fang Shuli and asked with concern. Uncle Master, how is your health? Dong Fang Shuli stroked his beard and replied gently. I'm feeling better. The affairs at the academy have been resolved. This time, I wanted to meet you both to express my gratitude. Without the two of you, the consequences would have been unimaginable. I feel ashamed thinking back. Initially, Nan Kuan Wu Lei disguised himself as a student and entered our academy. He was extremely talented, and I was very fond of him. I never expected he would dare to deceive me, saying that if I followed his plans, our academy would become more illustrious. Now that he's gone, and the two others, Thian Guan and Kai Yang, have been imprisoned by me, awaiting judgment. But enough of these unpleasant matters. You two are great benefactors of the Eastern Academy. If there's anything you want, just ask. Bai Li Yuchua clasped his hands in gratitude and said. Thank you, Headmaster. For now, I don't have any requests, but could you ask Ting Shui if she needs anything? 
Dao Tingshui was surprised. Senior brother, Dong Fang Shuli warmly said. Go ahead, don't be shy. With joy, Ting Shui replied. Uncle Master, I currently need the Jade Dragon Gold Essence to save someone very important. Do you know its whereabouts? Dong Fang Shuli looked at her in surprise. The Jade Dragon Gold Essence? Why do you need to find it? I happen to have it right here. It was a gift from Old Wuji when the Academy was first established. It's said to be a heavenly herb, very rare in the mortal world. Since you are his disciple, returning it to its original owner seems fitting. Someone, bring the Jade Dragon Gold Essence here. Dao Tingshui gratefully received it, smiling as she said. Thank you, Uncle Master. Xiao Qiu can be saved. Dao Tingshui quickly returned to the medicine room and called out. Apothecary, hand Xiao Qiu over to me. The apothecary handed Xiao Qiu to Ting Shui. She used her energy and the Jade Dragon Gold Essence to heal him, thinking to herself. Xiao Qiu, you must recover soon. Finally, Xiao Qiu woke up, weakly calling out. Ting Shui. Ting Shui joyfully exclaimed. You're better. The next day, outside the Eastern Academy, in a carriage. Dao Ting Shui asked Kim Mingyun. Eighth Prince, why did you come to the Eastern Academy this time? Kim Mingyun calmly replied. Since the trial at Pine Forest, I've noticed that Kim Ming Hook's cultivation has been rising suspiciously fast. I've discovered that someone has been helping him with treasures, including the Beast Tamer. All of these were given to him by Lu Lu. Fortunately, the one behind it all is now dead. Without that powerful external aid, my third brother won't be able to cause any trouble for a while. Ting Shui looked worried, saying. That may be true, but Kim Ming Hook is very cunning. Who knows if he'll find another source of help. The Eighth Prince must still be cautious. Kim Ming Yun nodded in agreement. You've made a good point. I'll be careful. By the way, are you both planning to return to the academy? Dao Ting Shui, holding Xiao Qiu, replied, we're not returning for now. I obtained the Jade Elixir, so I can now refine 8th grade pills. I want to return to heal my father. In front of the main gate of Dao Ting Shui's house. Beside a tree, two men were having a secret conversation. The sound of a carriage bringing Dao Ting Shui home was heard. Dao Ting Shui lifted the curtain of the carriage and breathed a sigh of relief. Finally, I've made it home. But she was startled to see two men, one quickly left, while the other was a servant in the household. Upon seeing her, he waved and called out. Miss. Miss. Dao Ting Shui's face showed doubt. Why is one of Dao Thian Hung's men here? The carriage stopped, and the servant quickly ran up, respectfully asking. Why didn't you notify us of your return? I'll go inform the old madam immediately. After saying that, he quickly rushed into the house, shouting. Old madam, young master, the eldest miss has returned. Bai Li Yuhua stepped down from the carriage and asked Ting Shui. What happened? Dao Ting Shui, deep in thought, replied. Perhaps I've been away for too long, and now the house is infested with rats. Second uncle must really miss us. Bai Li Yuhua coldly asked. Do you want to deal with them? The siblings quickly entered the house, and Dao Ting Shui responded. No need. I'm curious to see what Dao Thian Hung is planning. Under the bright moonlight, in the alchemy room. Dao Ting Shui and Master Yao were focused on refining the pill. In Dao Tenyun's room, the old madam sat by the bed, sadly saying to him. My husband? My husband, can he really recover? Dao Tuan Yang comforted his mother. Mother, don't you remember how sister healed the two of us? She said everything will be fine. Suddenly, the door to the room opened. Dao Ting Shui and Bai Li Yuhua entered. Dao Ting Shui joyfully said. Mother, I've finished refining the 8th grade pill. With this, father will surely be healed. Dao Ting Shui approached Dao Thian Vien and gave him the pill. She used her power to heal him. After a while, Dao Thian Vien weakly regained consciousness. Seeing this, Wan Thian Dan joyfully rushed over, exclaiming. Husband! Husband! You're finally awake! Hoo hoos! She burst into tears. Dao Thian Vien sat up, wiped his wife's tears, and gently said. My dear, why do you look so worn out? And who are those two children behind you? Wan Thian Dan happily replied. Thian Vien, it's been 13 years. You've been in a coma for 13 years. These two children are Dao Ting Shui and Dao Tuan Yang. Dao Thian Vien was shocked. Thian Dan, what are you saying? 13 years? Have I been unconscious for that long? He reached out his arms and said to his children. Come here so I can take a good look at you. Dao Ting Shui and Dao Tuan Yang, overwhelmed with emotion, rushed over. Wan Thian Dan, moved, wiped her tears and said. You have no idea how capable these two children have become. They're both studying at Jiaxing Academy now. Especially Ting Shui, you woke up thanks to the 8th grade pill she refined for you. But over the years, without you, we've suffered greatly. 
Dao Thianvin patted Dao Tuan Yang's head and emotionally said. Good, good. You've both grown up. These years have been hard on you and your mother. Bai Li Hua approached, comforting Dao Tingshui with a hug. In her heart, she thought. If only my biological parents were still alive, how wonderful it would be. The father turned to Bai Li Hua and asked. Is this young man the son-in-law of our family? The two were stunned. Dao Tingshui quickly waved her hands. No, no. What son-in-law? He's not. Dao Tuan Yang, hearing this, nudged Bai Li Hua with a smile and said. Not yet, but who knows what the future holds, right, Yu Hua? Madam Thian Dan smiled gently. All right, all right, stop teasing your sister. This is young master Bai Li, Ting Shui's senior brother. Dao Ting Shui turned and seriously said. Enough of this. Father, what exactly happened back then that caused you to be in a coma for over a decade? Dao Thian Vin recalled the events of the past and began to recount. I was traveling abroad when I was ambushed by a villain with a poisoned arrow. The poison paralyzed half of my body. Then, I was hunted by a group of men in black. At that time, I managed to pull off the mask of one of them and saw his face clearly. He was Dao Thian Hung. Dao Ting Shui narrowed her eyes, her voice full of anger, so it was him. Now that father is awake, Dao Thian Hung must have heard the news and will make a big move. It seems I need to prepare a proper reception for this dear uncle. At Dao Thian Hung's private residence, a servant knelt down to report. It's confirmed, Dao Thian Vin has been saved by the pill that Dao Ting Shui brought back. They even mentioned the events of the past. Dao Thian Hung's face twisted with malice as he growled. Dao Thian Vin managed to wake up? If I had known, I would have killed his entire family back then. No one will take the position of clan leader from me. That night, at Dao Ting Shui's house. In Dao Thian Vin's room, a group of assassins dressed in black lurked outside the door. They suddenly burst in and rushed to stab the bed where Dao Thian Vin was lying. Blood splattered all over the bed, and the door was flung open. The assassins panicked and shouted. Something's wrong. Standing at the door were the siblings by Li Yuhua and Dao Ting Shui. Ting Shui angrily shouted, Who sent you? The assassin looked back in horror and realized the person lying on the bed was a decoy. He grabbed his sword and charged at Ting Shui. But Ting Shui quickly caught him by the throat, disarming him with her other hand. Staring him down, she threatened. Do you want to keep your life or protect Dao Thian Hung? The assassin trembled and finally confessed. I need my life. Dao Thian Hung sent us. Dao Ting Shui threw him to the ground and sneered coldly. Humph, sending three experts with no sec to kill my father. Dao Thian Hung really does value my father. Bai Li Yuehua asked from behind. How do you want to handle them? Dao Ting Shui replied with a cold tone. Trouble brother, help me take them to the woodshed at the back. I have a use for them. Yuehua nodded. All right, I'll listen to you. The next day, in Dao Thian Vin's room, Wan Thian Dan carefully gave Dao Thian Vin a bowl of medicine. He spoke softly and emotionally. You've taken care of this household for so many years, it's been hard for you. Now that I've woken up, I won't let you and our child suffer any longer. Wan Thian Dan happily replied, with tears in his eyes. With these words from you, I am content. Now, you just need to recover. A maid entered and reported. Master, madam, second master and the elders have suddenly come to visit, saying they came specifically to see you. Dao Thian Hung and the elders entered Dao Thian Vin's room. Dao Thian Hung spoke, pretending to be delighted. Elder brother, you've really woken up? Our family is finally reunited, it's so great. Wan Thian Dan worriedly whispered to his husband. Why is he here? We didn't announce that you had woken up. Dao Thian Vin replied firmly. If he wanted to know, why wait for us to announce it? Dao Thian Hung entered the room with a fake worried tone. Our family is finally reunited, it's really great. He thought to himself. The assassins sent last night haven't returned, so I had to come and check personally. I didn't expect he would really wake up. Dao Thian Vin frowned and said coldly. Reunited? If second brother says so, then explain why you drove my wife and child out of the house. Dao Thian Hung bowed his head, self-reproaching, but spoke with cunning. Elder brother, I didn't want our family to establish a separate household, but Ting Shui really couldn't be controlled. She injured the servants and even harmed my wife. The Dao residents really couldn't keep her. Elder brother, you have always been the most reasonable person. What do you think should be done about Ting Shui's actions? Wan Thian Dan was furious and reacted immediately. You're spitting out false accusations. Dao Thian Vin stopped her and said seriously. Madam, I am well aware of what our daughter has done. Even if Ting Shui hurt them, it was because they deserved it. 
Now I'm telling you one thing within three days, arrange your affairs and return the head of the family's authority to me. An elder stepped forward and opposed. Master, asking second master to hand over authority so soon after you've just woken up seems a bit excessive. You've been in a coma for over a decade and didn't manage anything. Master's current position is also thanks to second master. To demand authority now is really biting the hand that feeds you. Bai Li Wan Badge, upon hearing this, angrily shouted. What nonsense are you all talking about? The second master was only a temporary caretaker, it's time to return the authority now. Another elder nodded in agreement. The second master never had an official succession ceremony. Back then, when he took the position, he said it was temporary, not as the official head of the family. Yet another elder said to Dao Tianvin, Great master, times have changed. If you return to managing the Dao family, it might not be as good as when the second master was in charge. Dao Thianhong, with a smug expression, added. Elder brother, you see, all the elders agree it's not appropriate. Dao Tianvin, enraged, shouted. Not appropriate? Then what about the things you did back then? Were those appropriate? Hearing this, the elders started to panic, whispering among themselves. Dao Tianvin continued, his voice full of anger. I was ambushed outside, shot with a poisoned arrow, and hunted down by men in black all orchestrated by you. Dao Thianhong angrily retorted, raising his voice. Elder brother, without proof, don't speak recklessly. When did I ever harm you? I even sent people to search for you back then. If you say such things, you must have evidence. Dao Tingshui walked in from outside, her voice cold and challenging. Oh, second uncle, you're right. Then take a look at these people and see if they serve as proof that you sent them to assassinate my father. Three tied up assassins were brought in. Dao Tingshui continued, her voice sharp. Last night, just after my father regained consciousness, someone came to assassinate him. Moreover, I didn't even reveal the news of my father's recovery to the outside, yet you came directly. Isn't this too much of a coincidence? Dao Tingshui turned to the three assassins and asked sharply. Speak, who ordered you? One of them trembled and replied. It was Dao Thianhong, he paid us. He ordered us to kill Dao Tianvin last night. Dao Thianhong felt guilty but tried to defend himself. Ting Shui, I have never met these people, how could I have ordered them? As for why I came to see my brother, it's because lately, good omens have been appearing at my window. I thought my brother's health must have improved, so I came to check. But I didn't expect these reckless men to try to harm my brother and falsely accuse me. After speaking, he drew his sword, pointed it at the assassins, and loudly declared. I must deal with these people on behalf of my brother. With a single stroke, he killed the three assassins on the spot. Dao Tingshui gritted her teeth, thinking, killing them to silence them again. Dao Tuan Yang pointed at Dao Thian Hung, furious. You killed them to silence them. Dao Thian Hung sneered, his tone cunning. Tuan Yang, why do you say that? I avenged my elder brother. Elders, did I do anything wrong? Dao Thian Hung worriedly said to Dao Tian Vin. Elder brother, your health is still not fully recovered, don't push yourself. Overexertion will cause you to faint again, and it would deeply sadden me. Dao Tianvin firmly replied. Without an official transfer of authority, I am still the head of the Dao family. I order you to hand over the authority now. Dao Thianhong smirked and replied. These days, strength rules. Brother, you're making it difficult for me. One of the great elders agreed, sneering. That's right, the great master has been unconscious for thirteen years, and his mind is addled. Now, everything is decided by strength. In your sickly state, how do you expect to lead the Dao family? Only those with the ability can bear the responsibility. Dao Tingshui, standing behind him, coldly grabbed his shoulder and threw him backward, knocking him unconscious. Dao Thianhong, furious, glared at Dao Tingshui. You dare attack an elder? Do you know what morality and righteousness are? Dao Tingshui calmly replied. I'm just speaking with strength. Didn't you say that the strong should lead the family? Fine, we'll meet at the arena tomorrow. The next day, under the arena, the townspeople were buzzing with chatter. One person wondered. Is the Dao family choosing a new head? The great master just woke up, and now he's doing this. What is he planning? Another replied. Look, it's a new family. All the great clans are here to watch, there's going to be a good show. Dao Tianvin, sitting on a chair, worriedly advised Dao Tingshui. Daughter, Tingshui, you must be careful. Dao Thianhong will stop at nothing to achieve his goals, and he might do anything. Tingshui smiled and reassured her father. Father, don't worry. Senior brother has found the person and the item I needed. The rest is up to me. She then turned to her senior brother and gratefully said. Thank you, senior brother. I will return. 
At the arena, Dao Fianhong looked at Dao Tingxue and said, Tingxue, do you still hold a grudge against second uncle? This is a family matter, it should be settled within the family. Now you've dragged it all the way to the arena, causing unrest in the Dao family. Dao Tingxue, unfazed, replied, I'm just following your words. Competing based on strength to determine the family head, but now you say it's inappropriate to bring it here? Or do you prefer scheming behind the scenes? An elder shouted from afar. How dare you? Dao Tingxue, what nonsense are you spouting? The second master is a man of integrity. Dao Thianhong raised his hand to stop the elder. If that's the case, there's no need to say more. Tingxue, even if you train for another eight or ten years, you won't catch up to your uncle. But to be fair, in this duel, I'll only use 30% of my strength. If I end up killing or crippling you, don't blame me. Ting Shui responded calmly without hesitation. Enough talk, let's start the duel. The judge immediately declared. The life and death agreement has been made, no blame for injuries or death. Let the match begin. Dao Thianhong channeled his inner strength and shouted. Then don't blame me for being ruthless. Dao Ting Shui spun around and kicked Dao Thianhong with such force that he was sent flying and knocked unconscious. The crowd below the stage was stunned, and someone exclaimed. What just happened? Another person, equally surprised, replied. She defeated him with just one move. The crowd began to cheer and celebrate. Such terrifying power. Dao Ting Shui is truly strong. Dao Tianyuan smiled with satisfaction and shouted. Well done. Well done, Ting Shui. Dao Tuan Yang, filled with excitement and pride, couldn't help but exclaim. Sister, you're amazing. Below the stage, Dao Ting Shui looked at everyone and loudly declared. Dao Thianhong has been defeated. According to the agreement, I am now the new head of the Dao family. And here, I want to tell you all about the good deeds Dao Thianhong has done. This man plotted to kill my father 13 years ago, leaving him in a coma for all those years. He harmed my father, bullied my mother, injured my younger brother, humiliated my entire family, and exiled us from the Dao family. And as if that wasn't enough, just last night, he sent people to kill my father after he had finally regained consciousness. Yu Yu Yang Kij, Dao Thianhong's wife, was enraged and shouted. Dao Ting Shui, you're slandering us. Do you think that just because you're now the head of the family, you can accuse others without evidence? Li Wenbai spoke up, questioning. Miss Dao, you've repeatedly accused the second master of plotting against the great master, but where's your evidence? You have no witnesses, no physical proof how can you expect us to believe your words alone? Six Vim led a family onto the stage and said. The witnesses and evidence are right here. Dao Ting Shui smiled and looked at them calmly. Did you think that by killing the person who attempted to assassinate my father, you could hide the truth? Yu Yu Yang Qi shouted angrily. Dao Ting Shui. Where did you find this troop to slander my husband? One of the women in the group held up a letter, her voice choked with emotion. Dao Thian Hung is a heartless killer. He sent my son on a mission, and before he left, my son sent us a letter. Little did I know, it would be the last goodbye. Another woman, equally sorrowful, recounted. My husband sent me a letter back then as well. In it, he said he might not return, that he might never see our newborn child. Dao Thian Hung. I hate you. You killed my husband, leaving my child fatherless. The crowd below the stage began to murmur and grow angry. This Dao second master is truly wicked. To treat the eldest family this way and even kill to cover it up. The crowd shouted in unison. He's a beast. Get him out of Qi Shui City. Dao Ting Shui looked at the crowd and declared forcefully. Dao Thian Hung plotted against the former family head, seized power, murdered the innocent, and oppressed his elder brother's family. Such crimes are unforgivable. As the head of the Dao family, I hereby expel Dao Thian Hung's entire family from the Dao family records and banish them from Sinwi Kingdom, never to return. The crowd erupted in applause, praising her. Good. True justice. However, Tan Chang Tian, displeased and filled with disdain, said. Dao Ting Shui is just a woman and a junior at that. She has no right to be the head of the family. Before, she injured my son gravely, there's no way we can allow her to lead the Dao family. Suddenly, the grandmaster of the Wu Ji sect appeared and spoke in a commanding voice. Why shouldn't my final disciple, Dao Ting Shui, be qualified to lead the family? The crowd began to whisper among themselves. The grandmaster of Wu Ji sect is here too. Yes, how could his disciple not be qualified to lead? She's more than capable. The grandmaster continued, his tone firm. As the first grandmaster of Sinwi Kingdom, I declare that Dao Ting Shui is the rightful successor of the Dao family. Tan Chang Tian slumped into his seat in despair, while Tan Meng Jiao thought angrily. Family head? 
Grandmaster Wu Ji looked at the two of them, his expression stern. Follow me quickly, something serious has happened. Night had fallen, and the entrance to the Qi Shui City Magistrate's office was crowded with townspeople, all whispering and gossiping. The Grandmaster of Wu Ji led Dao Tingxue and Bai Li Yuhua inside. Upon seeing him, the magistrate hurriedly spoke. Grandmaster Wu Ji. Finally, you've arrived. Are these two your disciples? He nodded affirmatively. Yes, they are. Then he turned to Dao Tingxue and Bai Li Yuhua. You two, look around and see if you can find any clues. I've been investigating this matter for a while now, and it's truly strange. Prepare yourselves mentally, understand? The two stepped forward and carefully examined the scene. The magistrate lifted half of the white cloth covering the victim, revealing a shriveled arm. Dao Tingxue was shocked. This child has been completely drained, all the blood has been sucked out. Hearing this, the people outside the door began to murmur again, growing angry. How cruel! A child so young, turned into this. This is the fifteenth victim, isn't it? Grandmaster Wu Ji closed his eyes, trying to control his emotions, and spoke slowly. According to the child's parents, the child disappeared from home the night before. They searched for two days but found nothing, and just two hours ago, they discovered the child's body in the room. His voice was filled with suspicion. Dao Tingxue noticed this and asked. Did they notice anything unusual? Or anything suspicious? How could they not notice someone entering or leaving their house? Grandmaster Wu Ji shook his head, his voice heavy. No, nothing. Even the parents from the previous cases said the same. The child disappeared from the room, no matter how hard they searched, they couldn't find them. In the end, all they found was a lifeless body drained of blood. He stroked his white beard thoughtfully and continued. But there's one common point, where the children disappeared, there was a faint bitter smell. I discovered it during the investigation. Someone witnessed the disappearance of those children and said they vanished after being engulfed by a fog. This story has spread everywhere. The common folk even call it, the devouring fog. Bai Li Yuhua, who had been silent until now, suddenly spoke up. Medicine? The devouring fog? She seemed to have guessed something and asked her senior brother. What are you thinking? He didn't answer directly but sat down next to the corpse, carefully examining it, and said. I need to confirm something. At the same time, a creature that looked like a cross between a weasel and a rabbit jumped out from her robe. Dao Tingxue called out. Xiao Qiu. It approached the dry corpse and sniffed it. Seeing this, she curiously inquired. Xiao Qiu, have you found something? To her surprise, the creature could speak human language and quickly replied. A foul smell. A type of evil, foul stench and another strange, medicinal odor. Bai Li Yuhua observed for a long while, her brow slightly furrowed, and said. It seems the situation is becoming more complicated. I just examined the body, and there are no external wounds. While alive, this child was in a state of extreme fear. The blood was drained from the seven orifices, and moreover, the child's forehead is filled with a demonic aura. If I'm not mistaken, someone is using the blood of children to cultivate evil arts. Bai Li Yuhua's speculation made Dao Tingxue gape in shock. Draining blood to practice evil arts? He nodded and explained. Although it's a shortcut and extremely dangerous, it can shorten the time and enhance cultivation. Many people have rushed to do this. Below is a rewritten version of the dialogue with clear emotions for each character. Suddenly, a frantic shout came from outside the door. Chief Magistrate! Something terrible has happened. A middle-aged man, dressed in green clothes, with a terrified face, rushed in. My child! My child has gone missing! After the martial arts match ended, the group of gossipers outside the office recognized him immediately. Isn't that the Luo family from the great sect? The Luo family has also encountered trouble. The chief magistrate, hearing this, tried to remain calm, his voice steady but unable to hide his worry. Don't be hasty to believe it, the child from your household might just be playing around. It's only been a short time, and... Before he could finish his sentence, the middle-aged man, growing increasingly anxious, interrupted with a panicked voice. We saw it with our own eyes. The child was running ahead when suddenly a fog surrounded them, and then they were gone. As soon as the words were spoken, it caused an uproar among the common folk outside. Everyone panicked, shouting. Heavens! Hurry home and watch your children closely. My child, my child is still at home. Qi Shui City is in a state of emergency. Ting Shui and her teammates realized that the situation was becoming increasingly serious. The city is about to fall, Ting Shui said, her voice full of worry. We've wasted too much time and still haven't caught the culprit. Why is the governor only now panicking? Is it too late? Bai Li Yuhua, with a serious expression, reassured them. 
Right now, we need to focus on finding the recently missing child. Hopefully, it's not too late. Before the sun had fully set, their group had already begun the search. We need to act immediately. Ting Shui emphasized. Let's hope we can find the child before it's too late. Xiao Qiu led the way, but as dusk fell, exhaustion began to set in among the group. Xiao Qiu, where's the child sent? Ting Shui asked tiredly. Xiao Qiu, with a worried look, replied. The scent is still ahead, but it's getting weaker. Ting Shui couldn't bear it anymore and spoke up. We've nearly covered half of Qi Shui City, yet we haven't found any clues. Did we miss something? Bai Li Yuchua, with a stern face, stopped and stood in front of Ting Shui. Stop. He warned. Something's off about the scent here. Ting Shui looked around and saw a thick fog rolling in. Why is there fog at this time? She wondered. The sun has only just set, the temperature hasn't dropped much, so why is there suddenly fog? As the fog began to dissipate, a loud crash sounded from ahead. The two quickly moved toward the noise and saw a group of grotesque figures surrounding a person. Ting Shui exclaimed. Why are there so many people all of a sudden? A young woman, holding an exhausted child around one year old, stood in the middle of the crowd. Xiao Qiu, with a complex expression, spoke. Be careful, this isn't a human scent. Just as Xiao Qiu finished speaking, the group of people, wearing black masks with glowing eyes, lunged toward them. Bai Li Yuchua shouted. Ting Shui, be careful. He quickly lifted Ting Shui into the air, maneuvered through the mutants, and landed in a safe spot. Ting Shui, feeling confused, said. Thank you, senior brother. Bai Li Yuchua, still serious, responded. We need to save that person first. Don't worry, I'll handle it. Ting Shui nodded, sensing the situation was growing increasingly dire. Despite breaking the joints of the mutants, they didn't disappear. Ting Shui panted. We've done everything, but why won't they die? Bai Li Yuchua explained. They're immortals. You can't destroy them with just force. At that moment, the woman in blue clothing spoke up. Take these medicinal pills. Hitting their pressure points can immobilize them. Ting Shui took the pills and looked at Bai Li Yuchua with doubt. Senior brother, let's try using this medicine. We can't let them continue harming the people. Though not entirely convinced, Bai Li Yuchua nodded and agreed to try. Bai Li Yuchua carried the woman in blue clothing and the child, using his lightness skill to leap into the air. Meanwhile, Ting Shui stood about two meters above the ground, using her inner power to precisely strike the mutant's pressure points. As soon as her medicinal pills hit, the mutants clutched their heads in pain. Within the time it took to drink half a cup of tea, a purple mist appeared and quickly vanished, leaving no trace. Ting Shui looked around and saw that the situation had stabilized. The woman in blue, with a grateful expression, approached. Thank you both so much for your help. If it weren't for you, I might have lost my life here. Dao Ting Shui felt suspicious. She looked at the woman and asked. Before you thank us, we need to know if the missing child in Qi Shui City is connected to you in any way. King Fei Yen felt a shiver under Ting Shui's gaze. No, it wasn't me. Bai Li Yuchua immediately asked. If it wasn't you, why is the Luo family's child in your hands? King Fei Yen hurriedly explained. I just happened to pass by and save the child. Ting Shui was still uneasy. If it was just a coincidence, why do you have medicinal pills on you? Didn't you just participate in an internal battle with your own people? King Fei Yen stammered. It's really not me. At that moment, the child they saved stepped forward, took Ting Shui's hand, and said. Big Sister Dao, you are the one who saved me. Just now, there was a purple mist surrounding me, and then I felt very sleepy. When I woke up, it was already dark. I saw a masked lady standing with the scary people. The scent on the masked lady was very fragrant, not like this sister's at all. Ting Shui listened, deep in thought. The child continued. The masked lady even patted my head and touched my neck. Suddenly, my chest hurt. Then, the big sister rushed in, carried me, and ran out. The scary people followed and wanted to kill me. Luckily, the big sister gave me some candy to eat, so I didn't feel the pain anymore. King Fei Yen hurriedly explained. Tan Min, I gave him a healing pill. If I had been any later, there might have been another corpse. Hearing this, Ting Shui realized she had misunderstood. She sighed, her eyes widening in surprise. The masked woman is practicing dark arts. King Fei Yen felt deeply guilty and, along with Bai Li Yuchua, bowed in apology. Miss, we wrongly accused you. I am Dao Ting Shui, and this is my senior brother, Bai Li Yuchua. We are investigating the case of missing children in Qi Shui City. If we offended you, please forgive us. King Fei Yen, though understanding, still felt uneasy. She returned the bow. It's okay, you were just trying to help. I am King Fei Yen, 
formerly a disciple of the Medicine Sage Valley. Dao Tingshui immediately caught on to the phrase, formerly. Formerly, by Li Yuchua, feeling that things were still unresolved and eager to solve the case quickly, spoke up. Miss, please lead us to the scene to investigate. King Fei Yen nodded and led the two to a mansion entrance. This is the place. Observing for a moment will make things clear. Bai Li Yuchua frowned as he surveyed the area. There's no sign of life here. It may be difficult to find any valuable clues. He remarked. Ting Shui nodded, worriedly saying. If that's the case, then our lead has been cut off again. She turned to King Fei Yen and asked. Miss King, what exactly are those immortals? King Fei Yen felt guilty and explained. Actually, they are not immortals at all. They are medicine people, created from living humans. Specifically, they are thrown into a pond filled with various poisonous herbs. After being soaked for a long time, the toxins invade their bodies, corroding their organs and brains, but leaving the heart intact. Eventually, they lose consciousness, no longer feel anything, and become mindless tools. Once they wear the masks, they only obey their master's orders and can transform into white mist. At this point, King Fei Yen clenched her fists in anger. The one who created these monsters is the master of the Medicine Saint Valley. No, it's the fake master. Bai Li Yuchua listened carefully and asked in doubt. I've heard that the people of Medicine Saint Valley always remain hidden and rarely go out. The masters of each generation are selected within the valley. How could there be a fake master? King Fei Yen quickly explained. I saw my master return from Tianshir Mountain and become a different person. He brazenly created these medicine people and sent them to Tanwi Kingdom. I intended to oppose it, but a few days ago, I saw a strange masked woman in my master's room, and that woman transformed into my master. Something isn't right. Dao Tingshui looked at Bai Li Yuchua and said. Transform into someone else? Senior brother, neither the heavenly realm nor the human world has this kind of technique. Bai Li Yuchua frowned and gravely said. The demon clan. King Fei Yen, saddened, hugged herself. That woman discovered me, and her medicine people chased me. I fled here, hoping to destroy those medicine people. I didn't expect them to be more powerful than I thought. My only advantage now is my speed. King Fei Yen gave a bitter smile, feeling ashamed for not being able to help her sect and almost causing harm to herself. Noticing her feelings, Dao Ting Shui smiled reassuringly. Miss King, regarding the fake master, my senior brother and I can help you. But the urgent matter now is to eliminate those medicine people. We can't let the people of Qi Shui City live in fear. King Fei Yen felt increasingly useless. Currently, there's no medicine that can completely kill them. My pills can only temporarily control their actions, preventing them from approaching Qi Shui City. Dao Ting Shui smiled confidently. If we can't kill them, then preventing them from entering the city is a success. I have my ways. After discussing, the three quickly agreed on a plan. Dao Ting Shui had come up with an effective method. For days passed, and no more children were reported missing in the city. However, at midnight in Tan's family mansion, Tan Mong Jiao went mad, smashing things in her room and shouting. Dao Ting Shui again. She set up another formation to repel the medicine people, trapping Qi Shui City. She's always opposing me. Tan Mong Jiao touched her face, her eyes filled with resentment. It's been three days, three days. That child was taken by an unknown woman. Since then, I haven't had a drop of fresh blood from children. As soon as she finished speaking, a purple light emanated from her body. Tan Mong Jiao clutched her chest in pain and collapsed, the loud noise startling her parents. Her father, Tan Chang Tian, rushed in and asked. What are you doing at this hour? Your mother screamed as soon as she heard the noise. Her mother, Lady Dao, asked anxiously. Jiao Jiao, what's wrong? Tan Mong Jiao's face suddenly distorted, her eyes turned blood red and then purple, with strange green veins appearing around her face. Her mother tried to approach but was stopped by her father. Don't go near her. Tan Chang Tian sternly said, his eyes complex. Jiao Jiao, why is there such strong demonic energy in your body? Tan Mong Jiao lowered her head, blood trickling from her mouth, as she struggled to suppress the pain. It's not demonic energy. She spat out a mouthful of blood. Her parents were horrified. Jiao Jiao. After spitting out the blood, Tan Mong Jiao seemed more relieved. She wiped the blood from her mouth and said, her eyes vacant. This is my desire, my power. At the same time, the purple light surrounding her body stretched out into a mist. Behind the mist, a person dressed in purple and wearing a mask stood with arms crossed, looking at her with disdain. It's been three days, and you haven't drunk a drop of fresh blood from a child. If this continues, you'll go mad and die a gruesome death, bleeding from all seven orifices. Tan Chang Tian couldn't accept it. 
How could it be Jiao Jiao? Are the missing children in Qi Shui City related to you? My daughter, who is so upright, how could she do such outrageous things? He grabbed her arm and shook her. You're talking nonsense. How could it be Jiao Jiao? The demon laughed heartily, seizing the chance to speak. Your daughter has practiced a demonic technique. She must absorb fresh blood from a child every day. If she goes three days without it, she will end up like this, unable to control the demonic poison in her body, and eventually, her body will explode and die. Tan Cheng Tian looked at his daughter, knowing that no matter how rebellious Tan Mong Jiao was, she wouldn't dare commit such heinous acts. He believed that the demon was controlling his daughter. Tan Cheng Tian growled. Who are you? Tan Mong Jiao was nearing her limit, losing patience with the conversation. She screamed. Father, mother, quickly find a child for me. I haven't killed Dao Ting Shui yet, I can't die. How long has it been? Just then, Kim Ming Hook entered the room. Jiao Jiao, are you okay? I received a secret letter from the envoy, knowing that you haven't drunk blood for three days. Hearing the familiar voice, Tan Mong Jiao softened. She turned to Kim Ming Hook with tearful eyes and threw herself into his arms. Third Prince, I'm fine. Thank you, father and mother, for saving me. Now, I can only rely on the third prince. Though Kim Ming Hook clearly didn't want to be involved with Tan Mong Jiao anymore, the current situation left no room for retreat. He held her close and whispered. I can't let you face this alone. I will find better blood for you. After all, you will be the most noble woman in the world. The people in the court should also contribute their worth to you. I will make sure you become the happiest woman on earth. Hearing these words from Kim Ming Hook, Tan Mong Jiao smiled, knowing that she had achieved her goal. The next day, news arrived at Dao Ting Shui's villa. The voice of Xiao Wan echoed from outside the door. Is Miss Dao at home? Without waiting long, he entered and clasped his hands in greeting. Miss Dao, I apologize for the intrusion. Bai Li Yuchua observed for a moment and spoke up. You are Xiao Wan, the general stationed at the northern border? Xiao Wan did not beat around the bush, clasping his hands and stating directly. That is correct. I ask Miss Dao and young master Bai Li for your assistance. An hour ago, my nephew went missing. My sister-in-law said that Fog suddenly appeared in the courtyard and took the child. Dao Ting Shui, upon hearing this, exclaimed. How can there be fog during the day? It usually only appears near dusk. King Fei Yen gritted her teeth. This is not right. It doesn't make sense. Everyone was still skeptical and had no clear answers. Xiao Wan continued anxiously. I heard that last time Miss Dao found young master Luo Jia, so I sought someone with experience. I have no choice but to beg for your help. Seeing that time was of the essence, Dao Tingxue said. Rescuing the child is more important. Borther Fei Yen, let's set off immediately. She glanced at Xiao Qiu. Xiao Qiu, I'm counting on you. Xiao Qiu understood and nodded in agreement. Um. With her keen sense of smell, Xiao Qiu approached a military camp outside the city. Dao Tingxue looked around and asked. Xiao Qiu, have you found anything? Xiao Qiu replied. There is a strange smell extending deep inside. King Fei Yen frowned, puzzled. Isn't that the military camp of the southern border? How could the child be there? Bai Li Yuchua, seeing the situation growing more complicated, furrowed his brow slightly. It seems things are getting more complicated, he commented. Xiao Wan observed the camp before him, noticing a clear difference from his own camp, and felt suspicious. There are indeed a lot of provisions here. This coincidence is too great, he said, feeling the coincidence couldn't be ignored. Dao Tingxue asked. General Xiao Wan, why do you say that? Xiao Wan sighed and replied. Actually, this return to Qi Shui City is closely related to the southern border. Over the past year, the amount of provisions received by the north has been decreasing compared to what is on the official records. I have reported this many times, but it has always been dismissed. The Ministry of War does not acknowledge any issues. Even without a war, a prolonged shortage of provisions will greatly impact our army. Bai Li Yuchua listened and commented. That's right, the court always distributes provisions in a set amount. If the north is receiving less, someone must have swallowed that portion of the provisions. Now, there are more carts and forests on that side than in the north. Clearly, someone is hoarding the provisions for themselves. Hearing everyone's analysis, Dao Tingxue fell into deep thought. Could it be that the southern border's military provisions exceeding the normal amount are related to Kim Min Hook?